I'm gonna put that in CCX then. <laughs> uh, can you, can you guys hear him? Oh boy. Yeah, and I'm gonna send a big message out. I guess I could just find out. I guess that's the thing. All right, say something. Oh, I'm here. Yep. Fair, fair. Oh. Well, then. Are yeah, we good to go now? <laughs> yep. All right, cool. Thank you, Ray. All right. Hopefully yeah, now yeah, everybody can hear me and everybody, and we can redo our introduction during this long cutscene. Okay. <laughs> go for it. Uh, all right. So, once again, hopefully you can hear me. Uh, I'm Cheese. I'll be running Parasite Eve. We're being told we can hear me. Cool, that's good. Um, this is Fair City Eve, released in 1998 by Squaresoft. Uh, and if you remember the late 90s and Squaresoft on the PS1, they could do literally no wrong. Uh, it is a game with an awesome soundtrack, a unique combat system, and was written by someone whose only takeaway from biology was that the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. Uh, I'm Cheese, I am joined by world record holder and Ruben connoisseur, Crazy Awesome. Hi, crazy. Hi. <laughs> What's up, dude? Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Um, we had a long cutscene to start things, then, like, eight seconds of doing stuff, and now we've got a five-minute cutscene. Uh, basically, of the first ten minutes of the game, it's about eight minutes cutscene, I'd say. Yeah. <laughs> Every single run, we got to sit through this cutscene. It's actually a really, really good cutscene, but... Uh... It, it gets tired from <laughs> it is a super good cut scene but when you're on your 800th watching of it it loses a little bit of its luster mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. oh uh, question uh since we were working on audio did you switch to the club i did switch to the club okay. that was I, I did remember to do that um uh, yeah so most of day one like most of the game we will be using of course guns uh but a, a good, good portion of day one we actually use the club uh I know we yeah. do it, but I don't actually know why, so please, crazy. Oh, yeah, so the club has the best ATB, which ATB is your, how uh, quick your turns go. This is turn-based, kind of. You get to move around, but you, when you shoot or take a turn or whatever, it's turn-based. Okay, anyway. Um, <laughs> so the club has the best ATB, meaning it's the fastest uh, weapon you can use. So when we're on the initial stage here... Uh, the club actually does enough damage that we can just use that instead of the guns. Faster, doesn't use ammo. Uh, that's basically it. We only switch to the gun at the end of the first week. Yep. Once we get a new gun. Uh, in this scene, the actress has obviously gained some kind of supernatural powers and has decided to set the place on fire. Uh, we're at Carnegie Hall. <laughs> Why did we go to the office? Why did we decide to go to the opera today? Oh, uh, also this game is uh, placed on uh, December 24th. So this uh, this is the best Christmas game of all time, just so you guys uh, know. Yeah, I mean, I really don't think there are any runners-up. <laughs> <laughs> for Christmas games? What are other Christmas games? I don't even know. I, you know, I'm not, I'm not familiar with... Star Trilogy for Sega Saturn? Oh, oh yeah, shit. maybe that one. <laughs> yeah. This one still wins. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> He's on fire. <laughs> He's on fire. He's on fire. Um. Okay, so this fight, uh, this is our first fight of the run. Uh, you, if you see yellow numbers instead of white numbers, those are critical hits. The more critical hits we have, the faster fights go. So obviously, we want critical hits. We're gonna complain the entire run about not getting critical hits, or at least I am. Um, <laughs> so we want two critical hits on this uh, actress at least to skip the whole turn. If we get no critical hits or one critical hit, it takes way too long. Thus far we've got none, and yeah, this is not... Alright, there's one crit. Maybe we'll get... Maybe we'll sneak it out right at the end. Here. We got it at oh, the end. Oh, we got it. Yeah, we snuck that one in there. 
and we were being told by the actress that mitochondria are awesome and the nucleus sucks. And, uh, yeah, that's, that's pretty much the theme of the whole game. <laughs> yeah, mitochondria are taken over her body. Ooh, and Aya has some... Aya is the protagonist, by the way. Uh, Aya has some uh, mitochondria powers as well. Yeah. It's basically what MP would be in, in most uh, RPGs. We yeah. have PE energy instead for our... For our mitochondria power spell things. Mm. Oh, and uh, because I messed up while we were doing it, her name is not just Aya, it's Aya! <laughs> <laughs> yeah. On the initial screen, uh, you get to name her, and she's the only character you get to name. Uh, well, she's the only character you use, so that makes sense. But uh, if you hit X way too many times, it just adds A's to the end of her name. So uh, typically, she gets at least one or two extra A's, and she's like, ah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. And now we're going to come up to another cutscene here. For those of you counting at home, we are at three cutscenes and one fight. <laughs> this is a really cool cutscene. Oh, by the way, this is Square's first M-rated game. Is it? Yep. I, well, I guess, yeah, I guess it would have to be. Huh. The boring game. Yeah, and honestly, I say this is a really cool cutscene. All of the cutscenes in this game are really cool. Like, they're really good, and in a casual play, it's awesome. The one thing I will say about them is they're all very sticky. <laughs> yeah, they advertise this game as the cinematic RPG. And it lived up to the name a little bit. It did. Oh, he moved towards me. Rat crit is a myth. So on that rat, if you crit him, you can take one turn instead of two. Um, and so you did. You had a mediocre Eve one, which was the slapping the actress with the baton. Uh, your rat was two hits instead of one, so it's a little slower. But I, what is your estimate anyway? Two fifty-five. You're gonna smoke that out of the water. Oh, I should. Uh, uh, I made the estimate when you know a, a couple of PVs yeah. ago. You can make up for all the time I just wasted. <laughs> Right, yeah, so, uh, so what, your PB is like a 242, 243? It's now a two, I, I got the new PB, uh, the 242, on Wednesday. Yeah, that's right. So the next fight coming up is Eve 2, where the actress actually turns into Eve. Um, and she just moves around erratically, and you have to hit her with a baton, so... I don't know, sometimes it takes a while if she decides to be nasty. And sometimes she just punches you in the face and crits you. Mm -hmm. Oh, but there's something else I should uh, explain. Enemies can also do critical hits as well. Um, and no, 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 no. Late, later in the run, we'll get a, we'll get a vest that heals for us. Uh, but we, something can happen. It's called a crit over, where the enemies can do more damage than your vest uh, healing. What you call it? It's over the, over the percentage of the vest, so it, it kills you. Yeah, so, the, the um, vest, like, cures you once you hit, I think, what, 25% of your health? Mm -hmm. But if you're at 26% and they hit you for enough, they can just... You're dead. Yep, and there's nothing we can do about that. We just say, yeah, we got crit over, boo, and crying a lot. I will be taking a few safety saves. <laughs> okay. Are you going to grab those revives? I forgot to practice that, but yeah, we're going we're gonna to do it. We're going to do it live. Yo, uh, do you have a moment for a read? Absolutely. We have a $100 donation from, from WJG999 for saying good luck with Parasite Even. Let's rack up some donations for charity. WJG! Thanks. WJG is a good friend of mine. We are uh, admins over at SRA, and we, we've just worked together on some different stuff. And uh, he's a great guy, and thank you very much, WJG. So Eve's acted pretty good here. Yeah, that was a really good fight. <laughs> yeah, I only got, I think I only got one crit, but she didn't punch me in the face, and she had several opportunities to do so. Well, that was a 10.42, by the way, so... Oh, I did forget to split. Oh, you didn't get your splitter back. <laughs> of I course did. you would. Why would I... I, well, I used the same timer, like, I needed a timer on screen, so why not my splitter? 
Um, hey, real quick, if there's a second. Go for it. We have a $10 donation from Glorious Cashew saying, tired of all the blop hate brownie face emoji. <laughs> the blop hate? I'm... I must have missed that one. Mitochondrial blobs? Oh, yeah. There's going to be a lot of those. So if you like mitochondrial blobs, you are in the right place. There's also an incentive to save and kill uh, something in another game. Uh, fade up the blob flush, so. Ah, okay. Yeah, that $10 went towards saving them, so. Nice. So that's what that means. Now I know. Yes, so incentives for pulls. Longsword is ahead in Monster Hunter World. Choose weapon with $100. And level head, fate of the blob flush is save and kill. Save is ahead by 10. Through Metroid, fate of the animals is currently at $10 for save. Uh, Len Lena's Inception, 32-bit versus 8-bit, and those are our pulls at present. And our rewards... No, not reward. What am I looking at, Matt? You know, we're going to be safe here. Targets? Uh, yes, so targets, we have death doors using the umbrella has been completed. Just in that. Jesus Christ, that's bad. Yeah, and that Metro Zero mission is not happening. I tried reaching out to uh, Tyson, but he hasn't replied yet, so. Looks like he's probably asleep. But then we got the money fade haircut. Matt shaving his head. Celeste all red berries. No add ons for Monster Hunter World, which is the one I really want to see Matt because Jal absolutely hates that run. <laughs> Like, with a passion, but apparently it's super difficult, and I really want to see him forced to run that. But we'll kick it back to you guys. Alright, thank you. What is a money fade anyway? Um, that's where, um, it's like the side, you know, like the sides of your head are like almost, they're not bald, but they're like shaved down. Okay. And the top is still long. <laughs> okay. And up there is, and the, the, the joke behind this actually is, First DPX, when I was uh, driving PGA back from getting White Castle, um, there's a barbershop right at the corner, like right down the street from me. And it has in a big sign that says, Home of the Money Face. Original Home of the Money Face. Oh, God. So, it's been a joke ever since. And you know what? I'm like, frick it. This year, 500 bucks, nobody's going to do it. But if, 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 if that's 500 bucks is met, I will get the Money Face. <laughs> so everybody knows that they need to donate. Uh, <laughs> offense one. Um, so I the my first safety thing just happened a minute ago. I went up the stairs and fought those two rats, and I did get both revives. And you got an offense too there. Ooh, nice. So we're gonna grab a bunch of um, extra items for additional offense on our weapon uh, in this route here, and uh, getting offense too is is very very uh important <laughs> it makes it a lot easier you're able to crit uh enemies faster um, oh no that's my bad <laughs> oh well uh, um so what just happened there is you can skip this fight if you dance along the uh, the pillar there at the top uh and it saves you about 30 seconds all right and i at least got it. crits to where my bullets are good yeah, that was a two turn, so that's fine. Um, usually, if you're speed running this, that would be a reset. If you if you miss that uh, skip there, but we are marathoning it, so well, that is it's right. not that bad. If Twenty seconds or whatever. Nah. It'll give you extra XP. Not a whole lot, but you'll probably level up one turn earlier in Central Park. What was I saying? Oh, plus twos. Yeah, you want to get. Uh, we're gonna get about five chests that either have an offense one or an offense two obviously the offense two gives you more offense because uh, that's how numbers work um and uh there's a 20 percent chance to get an offense two so you want to be lucky and get at least one uh of course the more the merrier and here we are with uh more gooeyness This is one of the one of the more nasty fights in the game. Uh, it can go wrong really quickly. It in can. Phase one, phase two is easy, but yeah, phase phase two is easy. Phase one, it can. But I have two revives, so yeah, you'll be fine. Um, 
So basically, we're just going to try to uh, evade. He's going to shoot like laser waves or whatever you want. I don't know what you call them. PE waves at you. And you want to bait him so he's not shooting it at you. And then run around with him and then hit him with his tail. Hit him in the face, he gets real mad and it does, it does like no damage to him. So. Yeah. Oh, I went the wrong way. I thought he was going to go the other way. Yeah, I thought he was gonna do that on the first turn. At least he only hit you for nine. Yeah, yeah, those usually hit me for 20 plus. Um, and it looks like, barring, all right. Oh no, I got the crit. Yeah. You got extra damage anyway. So if you don't uh, end that on even bullets, oh, let me explain that mechanic. Um, so if you, if you end a turn on zero bullets, you get a free reload. Uh, you do not have the reload animation. Which you're about to see here. And then since he was on odd bullets, <laughs> um, he had to do a reload animation in the middle of a turn, yeah. and that wastes time. Yeah, that first round against the alligator here is like the only time in the game that you don't really want to see crits. Yeah, it's pretty much the only part, isn't it? But I wasn't, e even for having to reload, that was not a bad uh, alligator fight at all. Uh, oh, and a note that that is not actually like a, a mutated alligator that uh, that Eve did. That's just a normal New York sewer alligator. Yeah. Just standard stuff. Just your everyday alligator, dude. And with that, I'm going to give a quick smile shout out to the do to Dungeons and Dragons that we're going to have at uh, 2.30 and 3, Saturday and Sunday, <laughs> because we're going to be exploring the origin story of New York City and UYRK, which is completely underwater. So I didn't make it. I just provided some of the basis and storyline. John, who's a player, did. And it is very possible there's alligators in there. Nice. Mm -hmm. This is our partner, Daniel. Um, I hope you like seeing him sucker punch that guy, because, spoiler alert, it won't be the last time. <laughs> Chivalry is dead. <laughs> um, a note about... Uh, if anybody out there decides they want to run this game, um, I hope your arm is in good shape because there is a ton of text mashing in this game. Yeah. It's not too bad though because it, it doesn't it doesn't really matter if you're mashing like your ass off or you're just mashing casually. It doesn't lose you much time if you're just mashing slowly. No, no, it doesn't. But it still is it's a lot like of mashing. It's not, yeah, it's not like Mario Party or anything where you have to break your hand. Yeah. Oh, there is a, uh, if anyone really wants to speedrun this, there is a very good guide um, by Primus on SRDC uh, in the, you know, the guide sections or whatever. Uh, that's not the route we're going to use today, but that's the, it's a very, it's a very good route for people to learn first before you learn the new route here. But it's, it's one of the best guides in speedrunning and I'd recommend it to anyone. Yep. I actually have Primus's notes literally on my other, on one of my other screens. Uh, oh, I don't reference go. them much anymore, but I still have them just. You know, every now and then. Uh, honestly, a lot of most of the reason I keep them up is for directions to run in the final th in the uh, final escape. Oh yeah, because <laughs> I can never remember them. But, all right, so um, it, oh yeah, I guess we didn't we introduced Aya, but not really. Uh, she is a New York detective. I think I think she's a rookie. Yep. Yep, that's right. Um, yeah, we're gonna go, uh, meet Wayne and Torres. This is kind of a little bit of a story section here, but, uh, we get a gun here that we're gonna use in the next day, or I suppose it's this day. Um, and we kind of get introduced to the tool system. The tool system allows us... Uh, to take bonus stats off one gun, put them on another, or uh, attributes like, you know, like a shotgun has burst. Well, I can put that on a pistol, and we're going to do that later. Uh, a little bit of foreshadowing there. Uh, we're going to make, make one a hell of, of cool... a hand cannon. <laughs> yep. There's a lot of cool things uh, that you can do with tools. Mostly we're just doing it for stats or rate of fire, that sort of thing. Uh, we'll get more into it later, but uh, the tooling system is really unique and uh, one of the best parts of this game makes uh, the weapons 
uh, more interesting, I'd say. Yeah, well, because you get you can do a with tools you can do a ton of weapon customization and well, let's put weapon customization is fun. Yeah, you can have like a pistol shotgun that shoots ice rounds <laughs> if you wanted to. And here's the tool tutorial. Oh, it's gone. That's like one of the yeah. few things in this game that you can actually skip. So he's just storing uh, items right now. Uh, basically, Wayne is a is a item dump. He's basically a, ch a living chest. Yeah, there's a bunch of inventory management in the game. Uh, obviously, we don't have unlimited inventory, so got to make sure we're not full. So we dump a lot of stuff. And it's one of those games that your inventory gets bigger the higher level you are. Yep. So you know here. what gets bigger the older you are? Usually the stuff that you have to deal with and the stress in your life on a daily basis, which is why we're raising money for Trent. Look at that. Look at that smooth transition. That was a, that was smooth. That was good. I know, right? That's why we're raising money for Detroit Love on Our Arm, uh, which is a nonprofit movement to get dedicated to presenting hope and finding help for people struggling with depression, addiction, self-injury, and suicide. Uh, they exist to encourage, inform, inspire, and also to invest directly into treatment and recovery. Um, we're raising money all these three days for them. We've done the last two years. Uh, definitely a worthwhile charity. It, it's one of the most overlooked areas of that people need help in. Uh, I, I still think even now, and I'm glad to be able to be raising money for it. I could have used those resources when I was younger. Back to you guys. Thank you. It is a uh, it's a great charity, a great cause. So now we're going to button mash for the next I don't know six minutes or so. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So uh, we're gonna go into the central park where the action starts again at about. 30 minutes in? What do you say? What is your usual one? Uh, 29 and a half, but I'm a little, you know, I'm about a minute behind. Yeah, it's about 30 uh, right now. Um, so we're just going through story. Nothing's really happening. They're trying to figure out what's going on. What is going on with the mitochondria? And uh, so we're going to talk to a doctor. Or we're going to go over to the museum, talk to Dr. Hans Klomp. Who uh, yeah, is uh, the number one fan of mitochondria. Yep. He loves it. He loves it. He uh, probably sleeps on in a mitochondria-shaped bed on a mitochondria-shaped pillow. <laughs> At least it's round. Um, <laughs> so we're just gonna. This is we're all trying to figure out. They're detectives. We're trying to figure out what happened at the opera. What's going on with this Eve character? Blah 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 blah. And that's basically it. That's the next six minutes. Yeah. Although, at about 29 minutes, it's one of the most important menus. There are certain uh, times where we have to do menu uh, things, I guess. <laughs> where we have to uh, equip weapons, drop weapons, use tools, don't use tools, make sure we're using the right power-ups. And there's a few just really rapid menus. Uh, I'd say about five times in the run. Where we just have everything lined up and then bam, 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 bam. It's not going to be that fast. Nobody's that fast. Yeah, but, it will uh, not be nearly that fast. <laughs> uh, but it'll, it's, it's impressive even if it's slow. Yeah. Yeah, if you go too fast, it's so easy to make mistakes. Go ahead. Sorry. How do you feel about the music for this? Oh, slap. Oh, the, yeah, the, the... You know what else slaps? The music for DuckTales Remastered. You can have the 8-bit or the normal. And either one of those are now options in a poll where you can donate to choose which one. You can have the original 8-bit music from the original DuckTales on NES or the normal music from the remaster. It is your decision. Smooth. <laughs> Very smooth. I love your segues. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Let's see, we're coming to That's visit. Cool. Yeah, oh. it is easy to make mistakes if you're going quick. That's what my wife tells me every time. <laughs> uh, you, need a, you need a rim shot sounder for that one. Uh, <laughs> yeah, we're going to visit some mitochondria researcher who works at the Museum of Natural History. I think that's what it is. I don't know. <laughs> Never been to New York. I'm afraid of the alligators. I mean, you, you've seen what they look like. I, I'd be afraid too. Mm -hmm. 
But I live in South Louisiana, so we have our own alligator issues. <laughs> Yeah, so we're just going to mash for about three minutes here um, while Hans Klomp basically ignores us and hikes Wax. extremely loud. And, well, and then he waxes poetic about how awesome mitochondria are for a minute and a half or so. Sure does. Clearly, I mean, this, is, this, this game is set Christmas of 1997 with the clicking going on on his keyboard. He had a really early version of a mechanical keyboard, apparently. Oh, I remember those old keyboards that were just, they're not, they're not as loud as obviously the game is, <laughs> is portraying, but those keyboards were louder than most keyboards today. Like the, the clicks were huge. It feels like, so much better know. than some of these membranes though. I'll tell you what. Yeah. I used to be a membrane person because I didn't know any better. Now I can't go back. Oh no, the clicks are where it's at. There's no question. I really frustrate some people that I know though because I've I've taken to playing Warzone on my Xbox with a keyboard and mouse. And people don't like that. <laughs> mouse and keyboard is just the way to go. It's... I I absolutely agree. It, it's so I'm so much better, but it seems that some people are upset that why don't you just play on PC then? Because my PC doesn't run the game as well as my Xbox. Leave me alone. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so Clamp just sat there and waxed poetic about how awesome mitochondria are and how we're lucky to have them and how they're going to take over the world. I mean, well, he never actually said that part, but there was subte subtext involved. The mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell. That is correct. Just like to write love on your arms, the powerhouse is the mental health, uh, help, and assistance community. That was less smooth. Uh, that so was... Yeah, it worked. Money yeah. for them. That's right. And they help... And they help find help and provide hope for people starting with depression, addiction, self-injury, and suicide, and invest in um, directly into treatment and recovery. That they do. And you know what? After everything Aya goes through in these six days, uh, she probably could use a little mental health help. Oh, absolutely. Jesus Christ. <laughs> We are almost back to actually doing stuff in the game. We're almost there. <laughs> yeah, uh, Daniel <laughs> drives a little too fast. That's for sure. It's okay. In, in a cutscene coming up, you're going to see the emptiest street that has ever existed in New York City. Yeah. So here we're finding out that the the opera last night they were supposed to have a live show in Central Park today or tonight, and apparently a bunch of people have gathered even though it was canceled. I guess they didn't see the memo about Carnegie Hall being set on fire. Um, okay. And the reason um, that uh, Daniel's so mad is because his wife is there. So we're gonna go try and find his wife. Pretty decent menu there. Not bad, not bad. <laughs> That's why I had to shut up real quick. It's like, nope, menu time. Yep. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I realized the, 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 the light's going, but look at this. This is a major street in New York City, and there is not a soul or a car on it. Most unrealistic thing about this whole marathon. It really is. <laughs> Mitochondria creatures, giant rats, you know, a huge centipede. That can happen. That's fine, whatever. An empty street in New York City? Mm. No, where's the traffic? Where's people swearing and yelling at each other and all the tech? This is not realistic, jeez. Come on, get it together, square unit. So Aya has these powers that allow her to not be caught on fire. <laughs> and, uh, and Daniel doesn't. Else, <laughs> you know, so he just almost died. And then they have the, I'll go, but that's my boy in there. But only I can do it. We'll, we'll save my boy. But, but, but. You know, your traditional, uh, your traditional buddy cop 
conversation when one of them has to go in. Yeah, in every single movie about cops. Exactly. <laughs> or detective. And now we're in Central Park, the next place where stuff happens. We're gonna fight some snakes, some birds, some. Are the boomerang guys supposed to be monkeys? I think they're monkeys. They're either monkeys or orangutans or something. I don't know. Pretty. They're decent. not airplanes or arrows. They are neither of those things. That is true. Remember that you do have that offense too, so uh, you can. Um, as soon as you get that grenade launcher, you can hurt birds. Oh, that's right. Oh, you, didn't get, you didn't get a medal on there. That's interesting. No. The 20% chance that you don't get a med one. And that's your dream. Yeah, and of course, to uh, get to the Central Park Auditorium, apparently we have to go through the Central Park Zoo. I've never been to Central Park, so I don't know if that's actually, like, true. <laughs> I've seen the inside of Central Park. These are birds. They're awful. They only drop junk. Oh, by the way, um, you leveled up uh, on one previous because you took that extra refight on day one. Oh, yeah. So, uh, you can heal now. So, when you level up, your max HP oh, goes up. Oh, that was bad. <laughs> your max X, X, excuse me, XP goes up, but your um, your current HP doesn't go up. So, you need to heal every almost every time you level up. Not a, it doesn't affect as much later in the run, but uh, early on it helps to heal. Yeah, early on the, the 25 to 30 HP jumps you're getting are, are big. So you are down a med one, I would recommend healing as much as possible. Uh, casual play, finding that zoo key that I just pulled out of that drawer is one of the hardest things to find in this game. Yeah, there's no clues or anything to it, it's just... <laughs> you basically have to walk around touching stuff. So this next chest uh, is an 80% tool, 20% ammo. If he gets a 20% ammo, that's really bad luck. Uh, that's cool. Thank God. Okay. <laughs> if you get an ammo there, that means probably about a minute time loss. Because not only do you not have extra damage to your central part, uh, you have to go about a 30 second out of the way walk uh, on day three to get an extra tool. Because you're missing one. Unless you get. Uh, oh, yeah, you forgot to switch on those. Oh, no, you did. Never mind. I lied. I've been working on my switching. Yeah, I think that the boomerang guy is supposed to be a monkey. I'll, I'll, I'll agree with that. That is cool to just call it that. You have bonus points already because of the. Uh, because of that extra fight. The extra fight, yeah. Make sure you're healing, too. Also, you have three rounds in the uh, magazine. Yep. Part of the reason I brought uh, world record holder <laughs> and the actual powerhouse of the cell, Crazy Awesome, with me was to yell at me when I forget to spend bonus points and at, at about ammo counts and such. Uh. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, I've been I've been watching those menus so much. I've played this game too much, like obsessively too much. It's been it's bad. <laughs> um, I, I can check those menus really quick while I heal. Uh, because it tells you everything you need to know on the the front of the menu before you do anything. It'll tell you your ammo count, it'll tell you your health, um, it'll tell you your BP. So you can basically just take a sneak peek within one second to figure out what you need to know. I, on the other hand, cannot do that. <laughs> probably only about... Oh, my voice was cracked. <laughs> He's probably only about four. <laughs> Probably only about four runners that can uh, that can do that on the fly with that much skill, and not a lot of them are running anymore. So, all right. Boom, boom, boom. Now, <laughs> so cut. we so we did some stuff. Now it's time for some more cutscenes. <laughs> really, really awesome cinematic coming up, though. Hope you guys like do. Yeah, well, and that's really that's more of a warning for the rest of the the whole game entirely. I hope you like goo. There's a lot of gooey and stickiness, isn't it? Oh, and I really hope you like.
goo coming out of people's eyeballs. <laughs> no, I can't see. My goo! So instead of setting this audience on fire, she decided to turn them into goo. Because apparently she can choose. Oh, we're about to see, and we've already seen it once, but uh, we were doing other things at the time, so I wasn't able to comment on it. The, one of the other themes in the game is uh, following ghostly little girls down hallways. <laughs> yep. <laughs> if you what see are you it, doing, Step Slime? Oh god. <laughs> yeah. Basically, Basically in, this, this, in this oh go ahead. Basically this whole run is just chasing Eve around. Yep, she keeps running away. And then mm -hmm. ghostly little girls keep uh you know leading you back to her. So if you see a ghostly little girl in the game, you should follow her. Since I grabbed the two revives day one, I don't I'm going yeah, to grab the one out of the gazebo. <laughs> I'm not going to grab the one out of the pharmacy. Four revives yeah, is just taking up too much. Yeah, yeah. Um, I would recommend grabbing the ammo on the other side, too. Um, just yeah. in case. Just for a fun run. Yeah, so that is our... In day one, we got two revives. That's our third one. So now I have three chances. If I die in the middle of combat, it will revive me with, what, half health? It's more like a third, I think. It depends on your level. Oh, this is the one place in the game you don't want to follow the little girl. She just ran down. We're actually going to run over here. Hmm. She will eventually lead you to where you want to go if you follow her there, but we're getting an extra chest because we want to use the stats from one of our guns to make our gun uh, have more damage. Right. And obviously we'll be able to kill things faster, yada, yada, yada. We're speedrunning. We're, we're speedrunning. We want to murder things as fast as we can. Down we go. So what he does there with the tool is every gun has bonus stats. They usually have plus one or two on either offense, range, or uh, what's the third one? Bullet cap. Really like bullet cap. <laughs> bullet capacity. So um, uh, when you take bonus stats off a gun, it kills the gun, but you get those bonus stats onto your own gun. So that gun had two extra offense on it. We basically just took those two extra offense, kills the gun, and now we do more damage. And we're going to do that a lot. Probably do it God, nearly 20 times throughout the run. Eh, somewhere on there. Alright, you know, as I said, birds are one of the worst enemies in the game. Well, we gotta fight four of them at once. Oh, oh. oh. No, you though, so you're fine. Yeah. I'm getting no crits. Yeah, you don't your health, too. There's a crit, but then the other guy went out of range, of course. I would check and make sure that they're not all junk if they have a med one out of it. Yeah, because I didn't point. get that med one from the first fight. Run, run. I oh, do not want to burn a revive here. It's all junk. Nope, all right. You're going to have to use your last med one then. Yeah. Well. I you might have to. Alright. <laughs> I got three revives. Yeah, I suppose. We'll I'm down to YOLO. <laughs> Hopefully I get good AT in this fight. That will help the YOLOing. Oh, that's something we didn't really explain is... Um, the AT bar is obviously your attack time. Your attack time where it's full, you get to shoot. Uh, but it starts randomly uh, every single fight. You can either start the fight with zero AT, you can start it with almost full AT. So obviously it helps to have full AT because then you can fire right away and you're not running around trying not to get hit. It's like a strange game of voice. Interesting. So, I 
mean, I guess it kind of simulates that you are busy with stuff at various times, so you might not always be ready for an attack of something that looks like came out of the lab. Yeah, probably. <laughs> All those uh, popular New York City polar bears. Well, to be fair, we are in the Central Park Zoo, so the polar bear makes a little more sense. Yeah. I'm a little scared for worms because I've only got that one med, but I also have, you know, multiple revives. So. Alright, we've got double crit on the boomerang. Are you gonna save or are you just gonna go with it? Oh, I'm saving. Okay. <laughs> I may have three revives, but I'm still saving. Right. Oh, he walked you all the way down. Oh, you got a BP. Cool. Sweet. I'll tell you what, if I was ever running an RPG game, I would save all the time. I would never complete a no-save run. I'm not doing that. Not for a game this long. <laughs> now, if I was playing one of those, like, 18-hour runs, I absolutely would save. But this one caps out at about three. No YOLO tool. Yeah, there's a 20% chance of getting a tool in there. You put it on ATB. That's interesting. Oh, your bonus point. I did. I like to go fast. We're speedrunning. <laughs> oh, and I guess save points. Uh, anytime you see a flashing red phone, that is a save point. No crits. So you miss both crits and these birds can die if you crit them with one shot. So he's switching off his target, so he's trying to kill them at uh, one shot, but they're just not cooperating and taking crits, so it's kind of a bummer. <laughs> it is. Alright. We're gonna be fully healed. We are gonna save. Oh, uh, your ammo counts at five, by the way. I will ch catch that after the... Uh... I like putting it at six, because it, you get that reload early. Yeah. I'm not doing... I'm not even trying for, like, 121 or anything, so... All right, and now we're going to fight one of my least favorite bosses. <laughs> it's definitely the hardest to learn for new runners. I guess you want to explain the mechanics. Yeah, it's so there's four worms. They're going to shoot these flaky balls at you eventually. Um, and every time you kill one, the others get more help. And they attack. They're more aggressive as soon as you kill one. So we try to kill them with a pattern as fast as possible. That's going to hit you. Oh, I can't believe that hit you. I can um, also not believe that didn't hit me. <laughs> so we want to get him down to two immediately, so hopefully he crits on this. Oh, he does. Okay. So now he's down to two. That means the pattern is uh, easier to recognize. And you want to run under the ball, not away from it. That's a mistake from any new runners. Yeah, you're going to have to skip a turn here. Yeah. You are. You're also... Um, you haven't taken a hit yet. Getting good crits on worms. So I'm at 90 on both. By the way, you can fire that right away. You don't have to wait to dodge on the second one there. Oh, okay. I'm... You're at full health, that's why. <laughs> Something oh, I am at full health. Alright. You can Dude. go a little more aggressive with Alright, I think they're both within two shots of death. Yeah, you might be able to switch on this one and kill both. If you kill both, um, then you don't get to do it, do it, do it. Oh, oh yeah! So nice. And you only got hit on the exact last one. <laughs> that was a really good fight. Uh, that so was. If you don't kill them both at the same time, you get a, a really massive worm. Oh, use your BP, there you go. Um, the last one turns into a big worm. He takes forever to take turns, uh, and it's just annoying. Uh, so you want to kill them before that fourth worm. You don't want to leave the fourth worm alone. Um, that is a, a super good uh, fight there. Yeah, no, that that fight went really well. Like I had to wait a couple of times, but still, I'm 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 pretty happy with that one. Mm. Except <laughs> you almost did it without getting hit except for that last. Yeah, I got, I got tagged as I killed the last worm. Yeah, that happened. Also, that horse is on fire. <laughs> and he's running. 
He's on fire. <laughs> yeah, this is by a wide margin the smallest fighting arena in the game. This is the whole thing. We kind of want to bait her into slapping us by standing right in front of her. Um, because her other attack takes much longer. Uh, but we have to be careful and watch our HP. We can only take so many slaps, and especially if she crits us or something. Oh boy, uh, she can crit you over here. She Just could, you know. but let's find out. Oh, she crit me. <laughs> he had one hit and one shot left, too. Yeah, actually, she might be dead. Yeah, she's dead. Oh, that's hilarious. She crit so me okay. as a death blow. <laughs> uh, so the enemies, most of the bosses, if they're dead, they'll finish their attack if they start it, and then they'll die. Luckily, I still I still have two revives. I, I would still for marathon. We for marathon it. luck, I'm gonna or for yeah for marathon luck. I won't even say for marathon safety because of yeah. marathon <laughs> luck. I'll grab the third one. Yeah, so she was dead when she punched me in the face and, and crit me. Yeah, so the only way she could have killed you was with a crit. And she did it, you know, one second after she was dead, <laughs> which is great. So that, that's the kind of stuff that happens in this game. It happens all the time. It's really frustrating. Still a good game to run, though, I think. Maybe. Oh, yeah. No? <laughs> the combat in this game is really, really fun. Like it has. Oh, I didn't. I didn't do my worm skits. Worm split. Uh, the combat in this game is super, super good. The soundtrack of this game is super, super good. Um, honestly, the text mashing is the only kind of. <laughs> <laughs> you know what's super, super good and doesn't require any text mashing? Mental health. Donating to our charity to write love on her arms. They're a nonprofit dedicated to providing, uh, presenting hope and finding help for people struggling with depression, addiction, self-injury, and suicide. They exist to encourage, inform, inspire, and also to invest directly into treatment and recovery. Exclamation point donate to get the donate link. It will also pop up every so often. And uh, exclamation point schedule if you want to look at the schedule coming up for the next couple days. And thanks again so much to the runners who are taking the time out of their busy schedules to run and help raise money for charity. We appreciate all of you. And thank you for hosting. <laughs> yeah, my schedule wasn't that busy. <laughs> I took the day off. Uh, <laughs> we pretend. No, you were super busy. This is a big deal. Hey, I had to take. <laughs> kind I, of I, a big deal, if you know what I mean. I had it. I had to take the day off for this. So, <laughs> uh, yeah. As Katsumo said in chat, Box McCloud uh, mentioning that he's surprised the game hasn't been HD'd yet. There is a whole lot of copyright mess with this game. Um, so it's based on a book that was written that's kind of like the book is kind of a prequel to this and the writer of the book really hated Parasite Eve 2 and so won't let them do anything else with the intellectual property. <laughs> I think is the uh, the gist of it. Yeah, that's about right. Yeah, he's like me. I hated Parasite Eve 2 as well. <laughs> See, and I enjoy Parasite Eve 2. I realize it's just kind of a weird Resident Evil clone, but... There's I... always a chance, though. There's always a chance. I mean, look how bad the first two Dune movies were. Or how many Hulk movies did they make before they got a good one? I mean, it's possible. It, it is. It is not impossible, but it's... <laughs> Unlikely. Like, the third game can't... The third game in the series, which is trash, I might add... Uh, they weren't even able to use the Parasite Eve name. <laughs> it's about as it, I think it's about as likely as DC getting their cinematic universe together. Yeah. Probably a different way that Dune movie, the new one rules. Oh, it's great! I it haven't great. seen it yet, but I've heard nothing oh, but great it. things about it. Definitely to be fair, watch it either in a theater or like on a TV that can really do it justice. Uh, to be fair, I love the old 1984 version. I. <laughs> I know I've seen it, and I know I hated it, but I don't remember anything from it. I, I mean, I've read all the books, so... Yeah, I know I, them. I, I've, I've only read the first three books, I think. Dune itself, it gets, it House Harkonnen, and House Trades. Yeah, it starts to really spin out of control. Like, it goes from Harry Potter to the Lord of the Rings in, like, 3.5 seconds. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh, uh, by the way, Moogie is saying there's a rumor that they reacquired the license, but there's nothing out there to confirm it. Yeah, I've heard that too. I've heard that rumor that somehow... They like, reapplied to... for something. I, I, yeah. There was a couple of years ago, they applied for a new copyright for Parasite Eve, I think. Mm -hmm. Something like that. Uh, yeah, so... so those rumors are out there. Yeah. So they've uh, evacuated the entirety of New York City. Uh, we just met a new character uh, during all of that. Uh, a scientist from Japan... Uh, Kunihiko Maeda, uh, who I will call Maeda throughout this because that's just easier to say. Uh, <laughs> and um, he isn't, he's not part of, he's not from the book, but he will, he's about to actually tell us a story of basically what happened in the book that this is based on, uh, which, like I said, kind of lends itself more like a prequel to this game, or this game is a sequel to the book, I guess, since the book came first. <laughs> Also, he's burning stuff in a barrel inside of a closed room. No fumes or anything. Even though clearly the electricity works because the the uh, the, the, oh, yeah, the, the TV's flashing. <laughs> the TV's flashing. The lamp is on. The 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 radiator's out. Like, they don't have any heat. Still, burning stuff in a barrel in an enclosed space seems like a really good way to get carbon monoxide poisoning. And yeah, what's with all these bottles? Like, is made an alcoholic, or what's going on? I mean, he, after the stuff he saw in Japan, maybe. I'm covering <laughs> the true stories of Parasite Eve here. Oh, that's okay. I've got a real fan theory that I'm going to discuss later during a particular scene. But do you know who could really help with that alcohol addiction? <laughs> to write love on her arms. <laughs> exactly, the charity we're raising money for. They definitely invest in helping people with addiction issues. So, exclamation point donate if you want to help out people just like this. <laughs> and Aya, who's currently going through some PTSD issues because of everything she has ha that has happened to her in the past two days and everything she's now learning. Oh, consumer, that's not a vent. It's a window with bars on it. Is it? Yeah. I always so thought it was supposed to be a vent. Yeah, yeah so did I. It looks like a vent. Yeah. Well, this is from Escape from New York City shit. To be yeah. fair, Meta doesn't wouldn't get it wouldn't get the carbon monoxide poisoning because he decides to sleep outside on December twenty sixth in New York City. It seems like a really bad plan. Won't you just get run over? Well, no, no, they 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 evacuated the city. Oh, well, he can always know. catch on fire, and that was warm. Yeah, that's true. That's true. A lot of people are catching on fire here, as far as I've seen. Yeah, that is a common... People catching fire, people turning into goo, the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell, and following ghostly little girls down hallways. All key parts of Parasite <laughs> The 90s were a different time. Oh, no, this is definitely not made as a apartment. They just kind of... You know, found some place. He, he's he's night. definitely squatting somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry, Moogie. I had to turn my sounders off for uh for the marathon. <laughs> Now Somebody it's time say, for the energy maker, the powerhouse. I'm a real booty shaker. I make ATP out of oxygen and food. What's my name? Mitochondria, dude. There you go, Moogie. I feel like if anything deserves a donation during this run, that does. So get your donation. <laughs> I have a sounder that, that, that plays like a little song and video that goes with that. <laughs> It is not me singing it either. <laughs> I think it should be. You should make a new one. Yeah, somebody clip that, please. <laughs> I hit the button. <laughs> oh, now we're um, going to go down to a gun store and do our next kind of big menu. Well, I have a clip somewhere of PJ Mexican who is vehemently opposed to the concept of dabbing doing a dab, so... I'm just going to... From oh. last year, I'm just going to say it. We've gotten a lot of bad things out of this. I mean, I am not I mean, vehemently opposed to people rapping about mitochondria. I just, Are you, you know. vehemently opposed to having a clip last forever of you rapping about it? <laughs> nah, you know what? It's for charity. It's good. All it's right. 
We'll play it every year. <laughs> so we have kind of a new route uh, for this this run called Hammer 5X. Um, we're going to use a machine gun that uh, keeps the times five rate of fire. We wouldn't usually do that because it dilutes the damage so much, uh, but we want to keep, um, instead of uh, putting a lower rate of fire on it, we want to keep that uh, that damage instead. Um, so, oh, you get it? Okay, you got it. Never mind. <laughs> uh, so this, this whole day is going to be uh, a lot of machine gun firing, more than usual. And it's a little more dangerous than uh, the normal any percent route, uh, but it, it's, it saves you a lot of damage for later in the run where you can make up all that time and more. <clears throat> and uh, Crazy here was the author of this particular spur of the any percent route. Yeah, I was just messing around. Like, <laughs> somebody in the Parasite E Discord is like, hey, why don't we grab offense items? And I'm just like, okay. Well, let us let me just mess around and do a run where I grab all the offense items. And so I did that, and then I realized, oh, if I tweak it a little bit, uh, this is actually a decent run. I don't know what's faster, and I just kept doing it, and uh, ta-da, I have the world record now. Congratulations. <laughs> also, the Mookie says that it's been cooked for you. They're happy to do it. Thank and... you. Thank you, Mookie. <laughs> Yeah, Moogie, uh, I, I gotta give a shout out to Moogie. Moogie is, if you run, if you, if, if you stream Parasite Eve, Moogie is gonna make his way into your, into your, into your stream. It's gonna happen. Yeah, Moogie, Moogie collects Parasite Eve streamers. I don't care who you are, I don't care where you're from, he is inevitable. <laughs> <laughs> Solid. All right, so we've picked up Meta, the scientist, and now we're gonna go to Dr. Clamp's uh, lab at the Museum of Natural History. Uh, and this is what mm, six, seven minutes of cutscene. Yeah, about six and a half. But I have a fan theory during this cutscene, so I'll oh, let's we'll, hear it. Well, when we get to the particular part of the cutscene, we'll we'll get my fan theory. Uh, there might be uh, Metroid Dread spoilers, so y'all just, you know. I bought that and played like 10 minutes, and then I'm super... To be fair, I guess it's really more much. Metroid Fusion spoilers. Metroid Fusion was a good game, I'm not gonna lie. I enjoyed it. Yeah, I wasn't a fan. To you, you're like, no, it's awful. <laughs> yeah, yeah it is. I want to kill the animals in Super Metroid, so it makes Fusion not canon. <laughs> That's true. Oh, I just liked it because when I played it as a kid, um, Fusion was much closer to um, Super Metroid than um, the Zero Mission remake was for GBA. It just felt a lot closer to the same feel, so I always preferred it, but I was like a huge Super Metroid fan as a kid. Alright, so what we're looking at here, A, is whoever made this cinematic doesn't understand the relative scale of things, because we're, like, we're going through tissue... And then globules, and then we're going to go to atoms, and then back up to mitochondria after atoms. So clearly they don't understand. Uh, but this is Meta's blood and some goo that he scraped off of uh, Aya's jacket. That's like the goo that Eve's been leaving around. Well, if you'll notice, the goo is actually the ex-parasite. Which confirms that Parasite Eve happens in the Metroid universe. That is correct. This is actually how the ex-parasite started. This is in this is a prequel. <laughs> yeah, no, this and then it destroys the Earth. That's why humanity's like spread to the stars. The ex-parasite wiped them out. I don't know. I'm just making shit up, but it sounds like it could work. It's okay. It gets better. My theory gets better. We have to wait for the next cutscene. All right, we're looking forward to it. I can't wait. <laughs> I've been here for seven years. <laughs> So now Aya wants uh, Maida to test her blood versus the Eve goo, since she seems to be the only one that isn't uh, well, caught on it, fire. Your timer is missing. It's one. Oh, oops. Uh, during this cutscene, I will fix that. <laughs> <laughs> like, once I get out of button mash mode and into watching video mode. All right. Hey, who am I to stop you from mashing it?
All right, so this is Aya's blood versus the X parasite, right? Well, if you'll notice, her blood fights it off, meaning that Aya has Metroid DNA, and that is the source of her powers. What if Aya is the... Maybe Aya is Samus. Samus. They're or both long blonde. Long-lost long uh, ancestor. They are both Samus. blonde. That, that, it, does, it does happen. I'm just saying. I'm not bored with this theory. I... I... <laughs> Oh god, now my timer's not correct on the right side. Probably just a resize, just leave it some more blank space would be my thing on top and bottom. Yeah, that's, that's what I'm gonna do, it's just more of a... When you're done mashing buttons. <laughs> oh no, I'm no, gonna I do it really while I'm easy. mashing buttons. The millisecond counter isn't that important, really. No. Oh yeah, they almost shot Clamp. So that happened. That happened. Yeah, yep, yep, they, they did. For for walking into his own office. Like they're in his lab. <laughs> they are in fact the intruders here. So there's a thing called Clamp Skip uh, that's coming up here, where Clamp is going to turn off the computer at some point. I'm not going to spoil it too quickly. Uh, not like you can read the text anyway. Um, but if he doesn't do that, if you mash fast enough, you can make him not do that, but it's supposed to spoil the run. Here it is. Oh, you got clamp skip. Oh, the run's over. I always <laughs> get clamp skip. It's cursed. <laughs> so in that little mini cutscene, clamp is supposed to turn off the computer and he doesn't if you mash fast enough. Basically, what happened in that scene is, while they were talking about mitochondria on one side, Daniel was just kind of looking around the room, not understanding anything about mitochondria. And then he happened to notice his son's name on Clamp's computer. And that's why he grabs and chokes Clamp for a minute. And <laughs> yeah, he got a little mad. <laughs> he didn't sucker punch him, though. Which is kind of Daniel's thing. Is that more or less restraint? That's a good question. Alright, now we're going to go back to the police station. I would say this is where the action starts. This is where the game really starts, because there's a thing, uh, I don't know, we'll talk about it a little bit, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> get, the, get the head of myself over there. Yeah, we don't have to tell Clamp that the mitochondria is the powerhouse of the cell, because Clamp is like the number one super fan of mitochondria. He knows all about it. He knows more than the, just the fact that it's the powerhouse of the cell. He knows that it's the energy maker, a real booty shaker, that it makes ATP out of oxygen and food. <laughs> What's my name, mitochondria dude? <laughs> he wrote the song. <laughs> <laughs> and here is Meta. Meta, uh, several times throughout the run, gives you useless items. that There are little charms he gives you. Um, they are all useless. They have no purpose. <laughs> yep, so we dump them. So we, them we, we dump them at Wayne as soon as we can. And, and yeah, now... We're kind of getting in... Go ahead. Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> we're kind of getting into the meat of the run, where rooms where we get a fight, we actually have to walk back through these rooms, and every time we walk back through them, there's a uh, little less than 50% chance that you get another fight there. So we call them refights, obviously, because that's what they are. Um, and you want to get as, as minimum of refights as possible to make, obviously, the mix run faster. Um, so we're going to complain about refights a lot. <laughs> Just get used to it. But um, any, uh, any room you went through that had a fight, you can get another one walking back through it. And here we have a, I guess, storyline-wise, sort of important moment, but grand scheme of the storyline, completely unimportant moment. So Torres is the quartermaster at the police station, 
And when Eve attacked and, you know, dogs and stuff attacked the, the e evil dogs and monkeys and stuff attacked the uh, police station, he wouldn't shoot because years ago his daughter was killed in a gun accident. Oop. That's One way too much button mashing, <laughs> yeah. So we're just going to dump off our crappy items here. Yeah, for whatever reason, it. she doesn't know that she can drop keys. <laughs> oh, I've got that office. Oh, you, use your office. Yeah, use your office. Let's Maybe. see if you guys have the same childhood as me. What do you guys believe is the most common button mashing oh. error that people have? Not speedrunners. Like, the world as a whole, what is the most common button mashing problem people have had? It's just, just a guess on my part, but I want to see if we agree. I'm not sure I understand the question, to be honest. <laughs> like, pressing A to get some text real fast and then having something happen you don't want. Most common one? Yeah. Oh god, I have no idea. It's gonna make so much sense if I say it. It'll probably not, not paying attention? Focus <laughs> center? <laughs> that's, that's pretty common. The Pokemon Center. Oh, pushing your. Uh... How many times have you healed your Pokemon a second time? That they didn't need. <laughs> oh yes, I've done that so many times. Yeah. Far too many. All right. So thus far, <laughs> Marathon Luck is holding. Uh, the refight we just got in the hallway with the dog, the wolf thing and the two birds is that one's honestly pretty rare. I think it, at least it feels to me like it's more rare than a lot of the other refights. But we got it. Yeah, they're. There are six refights in day three and four. We're on day three right now. And all of them are completely useless. They're all time losses. And then, yeah, Kathy. Kathy's faking her own death over there. I don't know if I just picked up junk or not. Kathy. I, I literally hate Kathy more than anything in the world. <laughs> nope, those are both meds. Having a stream that's like a little delayed from mine means I can check on, wait, what did I just pick up? <laughs> oh. Yeah, you got, you got a double med one. Yeah. All right, and then oh, so we never really introduced him. Um, the kid in red—that is Daniel's son Ben. He made friends with a police dog named Shiva, and uh, making friends with animals in the Parasite Eve universe is not a good idea. Okay, so you skipped one refight, so you're one of two. Yeah. You know, that's about average. Yeah. Uh, because it's average. marathon, I'm going to grab the ammo. Probably don't need it, but better safe than sorry. And then, so this is the ammo we were talking about that will automatically heal you. check how much ammo you have, but make sure it's a multiple of seven going into this uh, spider fight, otherwise it could get uh, dicey. There it was go. not, thank you. <laughs> what does that do? So, the, um, he's gonna, he, he has a times five gun, but it's times five, uh, plus 1.5, so he shoots seven bullets per, uh, uh, per turn, and if you, if it hits zero in between a turn, you get a free reload. The, so, the trade-off for that one and a half times bullets, though, is that I uh, I don't get to pick who I'm shooting at. Ooh, yeah. that's yeah, nice. What the frick are these things? Rats. They're big. And then these you are spiders. Really by that. The web this is a really bad setup for this fight. Yeah. Oh, 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 come on. Oh, he just spit all over you. At least I got pretty good target luck there. Yeah, the webs will slow you, which both physically slows how quickly Aya runs around and slows your AT. It's definitely yeah. a very interesting combat system. It is. I, I love the combat system in this game. It reminds me a lot of... Um, Fantasy's, uh, not, uh, Star Ocean until the end of time, or the Star Ocean games, or I guess even the Tales series, too. 
I can see that. Um, the only other game I'm aware of that has almost the same, like almost the same exact, is Vagrant Story, but it's not nearly as good as Parasite Eve. Oh, also, if you're a dog lover, you should probably look away. What if I love zombie dogs, though? Then you should look harder. <laughs> so this is our nice police dog, uh, Shiva, who has become Cerberus. Because as I said, if you love an animal in the Parasite Eve world, it's, it's not going to turn out good for you. It's so cute and fluffy. So he's gonna get another tool after this fight. This is, uh, how many, how many there, are, there are any more fights that give you a tool in the fight. Um, uh, so he's gonna get one here and he's gonna use it to upgrade his weapon a little bit. These rats will. Ooh, that was close to proccing your vest. Well, that was not a good rat fight. Alright, I'm gonna burn a couple you, of men. You can have a lot of men once in your inventory, you might as well use them. Yeah. Good sort. And then we're going to move some stats. Yep, G19 is the one. There you go. I'm at seven bullets. Cool. Perfect. Yeah, Mogi, I think you're right. This is the only one that, what, that drops a tool in the fight. They got me cornered. <laughs> yeah, but they didn't do much damage to you. No, they didn't. Yeah. And alright, that, that was actually yeah, not a bad version of that fight. What's yeah, that? That was pretty good. But that was two turns, wasn't it? Uh, yeah, yeah, I got I got good uh, good bullet luck there. Let's What's your ammo count? 22, let's make that 21. And yeah, we're good to go. And now we're gonna go fight Cerberus, aka Shiva. AKA, really the only kind of. Really. The bad fight of going with the Hammer 5X route, I guess. Yeah, and so we talked about being crit over before, where she does way more damage than your vest is, is going to proc your, your medicine for you. Uh, she is the worst at that, so there's a lot of luck in this fight. Uh, and sometimes you even want to make yourself take damage to your, your vest heals you. Maybe they, uh, no, you're fine. Um, 71's kind of a touching <laughs> uh, Yeah, it's the don't, don't, don't proc at 66. I got don't. it. If you stop have... it, stop it running the oh, no. <laughs> I'm good, I'm oh, okay, good. got lucky. Okay, so there is... A... Oh, go ahead, go ahead. I was going to say, I have an off-the-wall suggestion for a game for you to try. If you want, if you want it. What's that? Um, Dark Savior for the Saturn. Dark Savior for the Saturn. It, it's not the same as this, but it gives me very, very similar vibes. I think you like it. The combat is... It, 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 it's got a similar aesthetic style. It's, I, I don't want to give away spoilers, but it, it, it's very unique and very good. I think you love it. I'll have to uh, give that a shot. All in all, not a bad Shiva fight. Uh, the middle head can heal the others, um, know, but we didn't get any heal procs, so that, honestly, for the most part, as long as I don't burn a revive and I don't get a heal, I consider it a pretty good Shiva fight. Were you trying to take contact damage there, or were you just unlucky? <laughs> no, I was trying to take contact damage. <laughs> okay, don't do that when you have, like, 60 health. Only do that when you have, like, 40. Otherwise, you're just going to get yourself further down. She's going to laser beam you, and you're, you're screwed. you gotta, you got to roll with some luck there. Gotcha. I was just, I was just like, no, stop taking damage. <laughs> I'm just like, YOLO! <laughs> and now we find out that Ben is sad because Shiva is dead. Yeah, what movie is that? You usually end up sitting at 49 and then she'll either crit you with the laser or the lunge. If you're sitting around 60, she can crit you with the lunge, but that's it's A, easier to dodge, and uh, B, it's rare that she crits you with it. So... Okay. My, my starter pistol percent uh, practice has definitely gotten me a lot better at dodging, dodging the lunge. Yeah. Yeah, so there are it's multiple really categories on this game. Um, we're playing just, you know, new game slash any percent. Uh, there's new game plus, where at the end of the game, you get to keep... You can play new game plus, and you can keep one weapon and one armor from your previous playthroughs. 
and so in New Game Plus, you don't you own, you pick up almost nothing because you just murder everything. <laughs> well, kind of like Metal Gear Solid. Kind of, yeah. I never ever got any of those items, and the thing is, I always wanted to play as that ninja so bad. <laughs> but I was not about to beat that game three times or two times, Come whatever on. it was. Yeah, three times with the ninja. And then if you're looking for a shorter category, there's New Game Plus Chrysler Building. Uh, in the New Game Plus, there's actually a different final boss, or there's an optional different final boss that's supposed to give you the quote-unquote true ending of the game uh, at the top of the Chrysler Building. Well, there's a category specifically where you play New Game Plus just to do the Chrysler Building. And it's only, what, 24 minutes or so? Ruff, 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 ruff. <laughs> I just put Cheerios in my mouth because you asked me that. <laughs> and then uh, Crazy and Moogie have actually kind of done a good bit of work on uh, routing a couple of other ones. Uh, starter pistol percent, where you only use the pistol you start with throughout the whole game. And then any pistol percent, where you just only use pistols. So we use, day two we use a rifle, we use a couple of different machine guns in the game. Uh, but in any pistol percent, you you don't get to use those. You can only use pistols that you pick up. And then who was it who, who thought of New Game Plus Zero? I hated that one. <laughs> oh, yeah. New Game Plus Zero. Uh, which is New Game Plus, where... In New Game Plus, the enemies do more damage, have more health. I think there are more of them in most of the fights. Yep. Um, but it's New Game Plus, but you don't carry over a weapon or an armor. <laughs> So it's just, so it's just it's, a little a little masochistic. Is what it's just saying. hard mode, really. Like it's it's basically <laughs> hard mode. Though so you do you do get to keep at the end of the game before ex uh, new game plus slash ex mode, it does give you a bunch of bonus points. That's the one thing you get to keep in new game plus zero is those bonus points. Yeah, three thousand. Yeah, I think it's three thousand bonus points. Uh, do we even explain bonus points? Yet? I don't. I don't <laughs> think we really did. <laughs> Uh, so, after a bunch of levels up, uh, you get bonus points, and the bonus points you can either spend on damage, you can spend on defense, or you can spend on ATB, or inventory space. It's basically just free bonus points, I guess. <laughs> it's free points you can put into your gun, or your def or your armor, yeah, or every, your ATB. So. Every time you get 100 bonus points, which you get a random number of them at any given level up, uh, you can put one point in either... You know, the attack on your gun, defense on your wet, on your armor, your ATB, and how fast your AT goes. Two over the... Yeah, I got it. Okay. So, um, it actually... There is a rhyme and reason to it. Um, every enemy that you fight has a certain amount of bonus points. And, and if you get hit, you you lose, like, a bonus point every time you get hit by an enemy. Ghostly so little actually, girl alert. Oh, yeah, there she is. <laughs> so, every time you get hit by an enemy, the less points you get on the next level up for your bonus points. Oh, I did not know that. I thought it was, like, okay. random. That's why if you take a ton of damage in Central Park, you won't get all 400 after uh, Worms. Oh. You'll get, like, 397 or some shit like that. Alright, so we're here at the hospital because the hospital has a sperm bank and Eve needs sperm. I did not- I'm not making that up. That is straight up the storyline of this game. But you see, normally when people go to the hospital, they need help. And you know who provides help and actually helps fund hospitals who deal with mental health issues? To Right Love in Our Arms helps do that. And they're a nonprofit movement dedicated to presenting hope and finding help for people struggling with depression, addiction, self injury, and suicide. They exist to encourage, inform, inspire, and also to invest directly into treatment and recovery. And that is who we are raising money for this year. The schedule is there in chat. And then also, the donate is right there. Exclamation point donate. Excellent He's segue. He's so good at this. It's ve <laughs> they're you. very smooth. <laughs> the segues are very smooth. <laughs> well, thank you. <laughs> it's quite a step up from what I did last year. I'm having fun with it. But yeah, so we're at the hospital because this hospital has a sperm bank. We tried to get on the elevator to get to the 13th floor where the sperm bank is because, you know, that's the logical place to put the sperm bank uh <laughs> but eve cut the cut the cable or whatever and now we're in the basement and then she cut the power
after the next fight, it might be a good time to uh, sort and make sure you're using your med ones instead of healing, because those med ones are useless now. Yeah. Oh, and the, the one shout out I will give to the hospital, this is the only place in the entire game where Aya, uh, once she's used a key, she's like, I don't need this anymore, I'm gonna throw it away. <laughs> yeah, for whatever reason, the early keys, you have to keep in your inventory or give them away. Sentimental value. Yeah. Oh, I didn't quite hide yeah, behind the... Oh, good. You almost got trapped there. Oh, shoot faster, Aya! Oh! From downtown. <laughs> that was a three-pointer for sure. <laughs> so if you step in the green pools that these bugs leave on the ground, it slows you. And uh, we're speedrunners. We want to go fast. You got two BP. Right. Oop, not that one. I typically use that offense right away just because, you know, oh, there's your metal ones, you know. Yep, and I'm going to drop that cure M because I don't actually want it, and I'm good. Now I'm good. Yeah, like I said, part of the reason I brought world record holder and uh, Patriots fan, crazy awesome with me, is uh, to yell at me when I forget to use bonus points. Yeah, that's all I'm here for. Good call. <laughs> what do you do though when you are the world record holder for a run and you still go ten minutes over estimate? Cry a little bit. In shame. <laughs> oh yeah, no, that's definitely before this run. Oh, that's right. I don't know. I'm not the world record holder for anything, so. Uh... <laughs> I believe in you. You can do it. Yeah, no, no, I can't. I think you can hold the fans and club the world record. I'm just here so I don't get fined. Yeah, I'm just here so I don't get fined. <laughs> Alright, so we've got a possible refight coming up in this room. Gosh. Yeah. You keep getting these. Well, you're two of three right now, so that's above average. Uh, this is below average luck. It's marathon luck. That, that's all bad. That, that whole little scene just went went really bad really quickly. So for anybody who is joining us in the middle of the run, do you want to explain the I'm just here so I don't get fined? <laughs> uh, I, nope, nope, I don't feel like it. <laughs> <laughs> so what that's saying is a really great story, you just don't want to tell it. <laughs> okay, so uh, do you know Marshawn Lynch? Uh, uh, yes, I do. Okay, running back from for the Seahawks, Seahawks a couple yeah. other teams. Um, uh, so he was forced in his contract to do uh, media, uh, like oh, talk to yeah, the media. Oh yeah, I remember now the press event. I'm just here. I got. Oh, I remember. So, so uh, he was either going to get fined if he didn't talk to the media. So he went and talked to the media, and then every time they asked him a question, he just said, "I'm just here, so I don't get yep, fined." Yeah, I remember that now. God, how long ago was that? Uh, I think like 2013, 2014. But so when he went to the Super Bowl that year, they had they had that that major press conference where he has to sit there for like yep. 20 minutes, and <laughs> he did it for 20 straight minutes. I'm just here so I don't get fined. I'm just that's here dedication so I don't get fined. right there. Yeah. <laughs> you know who has dedication? To write love on her arms. Oh, I have to help and finding help people struggling with depression, addiction, self-injury, and suicide. <laughs> uh, so th that chest he just got, you can either get an M10 or a, um, a Micro Uzi. M10 is the worst one you can get. It's not as bad now with the new route, but it's still pretty bad. It's pretty, basically marathon lock. I'm going to the warehouse anyway for the, uh, the vest, so I'm going to grab the PPK there and push the stats over at least. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, the PPK is a plus two damage gun, so that's good. You can probably enter your shot and kill right here. I'm really bad about remembering to use energy shots when I don't have full PE. <laughs> oh, a lot of people don't do that. A lot of runners just don't realize, oh, I can use energy shot whenever I want to. <laughs> You'll do less damage. Hey, right. so the reason I've been here in the, or what I've been doing while I've been here in the basement is picking up these fuses, 
because Eve cut the power. And now I'm going to put all the fuses back. Oh, um, I don't know if you were here yesterday, uh, Reaver, when I was running. Um, I had no PE coming into Centipede, and you can still kill one of those middle parts with, like, one-third of your PE on an energy it. shot. Really? So you know, as an FYI, yep. We'll okay. see Centipede later in the run here. Uh, yeah. Everyone. Centipede is very naughty. Centipede yeah. sounds like a bad Batman villain. <laughs> Well, this one can be anywhere from bad Batman villain to the human centipede and how bad it is. Oh, no. That's pretty bad. Oh, I've had some centipede ba fights go real bad. <laughs> yeah, centipede's probably the last boss here that is really a major, uh, as Moogie said, is a gatekeep. It's, it, it can go wrong really fast. Now really there are two ghostly fast. little girls. They're multiplying. Yeah, she got the cable on the first elevator. We took the second one up. So now you'll see, uh, I'm actually, I I'm, I'm shooting fewer bullets because I'm at a times three, or times two, instead of the times five, but I'm doing way more damage per bullet. Um, there's a formula for, you know, if you have you're shooting this many bullets per round, how much damage each bullet does. But the gist of it is, the fewer bullets you shoot per round, the more damage each bullet does. Yeah, if you have a really high rate of fire, it dilutes all the damage on your bullets, and you're just basically wasting bullets. That's why when I was talking about the times five, that gun we use in uh, day three does seven uh, rounds per turn. Which is really high, we don't want to be there, but we do it as a sacrifice for the damage. Yeah. Uh, that's pretty much what Energy Shot is, is bullets made out of my mitochondria. And, uh, actually, I'm sorry, those bullets we yeah. get to later. Spoiler alert. Moogie is right. <laughs> if you want bullets made out of Aya's mitochondria, we'll get to that later. Uh, but yes, uh, Box McCloud, the music in this game is honestly one of the one of the reasons that I can just keep playing it is because the music is just that good. It slaps, as the kids would say. It does slap. It's a real it vibe. Has so much drip. It ha definitely <laughs> has drip. Whatever that yeah, is. Drip. Whoop, whoop, whoop. All right. Trying to dodge the jelly balls while dodging the goo. WJG says the mitochondria is not only the powerhouse of the cell, but also the powerhouse of the bullet soon. Uh, yeah. It's the powerhouse of the cell, powerhouse of the shell. It's just the powerhouse. It's, it, it's the energy maker. It's a real booty shaker. Powerhouse of the shell. <laughs> <laughs> Soon enough. We all wish that, Box McCloud, but we don't speak that name here. <laughs> <laughs> no, the, the, the third game in this series is pretty much universally reviled. Like, it has a couple of defenders, but it's a very, very small number of defenders. So, like, the Postman or Waterworld? Yeah. Hey, I unironically <laughs> love Waterworld. I you know, do. I know it's a terrible movie, but I love it but anyway. It's, it's just something good about it. Have you seen The Postman? I have. I didn't care for as much that, but my dad is actually a postmaster, and he really hated that movie and would not shut up during it. So that may have something to do with it. Uh, what do I do? That might, yeah, no, I watched it by myself, and I mean, it's just Waterworld on land, but it's delightful. All right, no refight in that room. So that room, even though, oh, and that one too. We're two of five so far. And two, two six. six. There you go. That ain't bad. So much for the marathon, lot. Yeah. Yeah. The uh, yeah. the that last room before I turned around, where I got that card key from the nurse in the corner. Even though you haven't actually left the room, you can get a refight in that room. <laughs> and it's not a fun one to get. It is not a fun one to get. But yeah, two out of six. That's uh, above average luck for you. Yeah. Oh, what am I doing? Nope. 
<laughs> you need to yell at me when it's time to go to the clamp's office again, because, you know, we all saw how that okay. went on Wednesday. <laughs> It, you, you still PP'd even though you did that. I did. Had I not done that though, I'd be, I'd have jumped to eighth instead of ninth, because I'm only like oh. seven seconds behind eighth place now. That's kind of sting a little bit. It does, but. <laughs> oh, he dropped the oh. armor. That's, there's a very low chance that he drops an armor that we can't use uh, instead of ammo, and then. We just have to dump it. It's just it's, it's a time waste when that happens. I'm just I just want to point out that roughly 10 to 30 seconds ago you said, "Hey, look, I guess it's not marathon luck." And then this happened. There may have been a jinx as well. <laughs> I'm gonna call that <laughs> the commentator curse. Yup. <laughs> How, how family friendly do we have to be here, Meta? Oh, I went to the basement, um, son I of mean, a bitch. I've already said no. one, like eight times today, so. Alright, cool. I made references to, like, uh, what, then, like, what are you doing, Step Slime? So, I mean, within reason, but, like. <laughs> then we have a particular. A bit different than most marathons. We have a particular room that we're gonna name later. I, I think it'll oh. probably be fine. Oh, it'll be fine. Yeah. I, 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 we once uh, ran a drunk percent Super Metroid tournament, so... Fair enough. Now, next year, the standards might be different. Matt's gonna be running it, but this year, this is still under me, and we're a little bit more lenient. Alright, so we gotta fight here. The weird thing in the corner is called a mixed man, and they suck. So you can energy chop from anywhere, it doesn't No, I, I, I know. My brain just thought I oh, needed to be <laughs> not behind that jelly because reasons. Marathon brain. Marathon brain. We're going to call it that. Oh, nice kill, bud. Yeah, you got the first shot, which is... So the mixed men, the, the first thing that I killed, can drop these balls around. And uh, if you don't kill the body, it can just keep dropping them. It'll do it forever. And it slows you down with the uh, this the yell or whatever. Paralysis or the stasis, yeah. I don't know who hid the button out of the room behind the centrifuge, but somebody did. <laughs> and we're gonna get some dog food. Yay! That's fine, Moogie. You can have credit for naming the room once we get there. <laughs> yeah. You you say it, not me. <laughs> I'll, 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 I'll happily be the one. Yeah. Look, they already have a clip of me singing the mitochondria rap. Oh, fair enough. What do I have to lose at this point? <laughs> yeah, so when the mixed men do that yell, they can slow you. or They don't always seem to slow me, though. It's weird. So it seems like ammo management's important. It's Absolutely. hard to get ammo drops. You know what's not hard to get though? Oh, I don't know what. Three games on Steam. If you follow the channel that DPX is going to be on next year, Dog Pound Speedrunning, um, and you send me a screen clip in Discord or Whisper, um, I will give you a free Steam game because I, you don't need to follow here if you only care about speedrunning. <laughs> So this is the, the, the actual sperm bank room, um, noted, coined by Moogie as the cum room. We are in the cum room. And wow, I'm getting really bad target luck here. You really want to finish that cum room quickly, don't you? You really do, uh, but we didn't. You gotta spray I'm, all I'm over I'm gonna grab the cum ammo. You like... really did. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, this is the, you know, we, while we were downstairs when we fought the giant jelly, we turned off the liquid nitrogen, which then ruined the cum room. Yeah, I mean, now it's all, I mean, it would unfreeze and just get everywhere. Exactly. And if you look, it's there's vials of cum everywhere. The load zone. Oh, that's such a great name for there it. The load zone. <laughs> that's beautiful. 
Uh, so you're gonna want to uh, use your BP and make sure you're, you're in a multiple of three. You are uh, with 21 rounds, so you don't need to toy with your gun or anything. Use your BP though. I used it in the wrong place. Oh well. <laughs> it's fine. Mm. It'll be okay. Do a little more damage. Load zone. <laughs> the load zone is good. That may replace the cum room. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and why don't you guys load up on those donations to Two Right Love Hunter on mm -hmm. a nonprofit movement dedicated to presenting help and finding help for people struggling with depression, addiction, self injury, and suicide. Take this to encourage, inform, inspire, and also to invest directly in the treatment and recovery. And they are the charity that every single penny of your donation goes to. Dude, I took a spit tape on that one. <laughs> <laughs> Now the military's involved, which all right, there's a car that they just like caused to spin out on the road, but they evacuated the city. There's just one lone person. She's like 90 years old, and she doesn't believe that any of this is actually. I mean, it sounds unrealistic. Like if you would think about 10 years ago, with the state of the world now, it's entirely possible. There's some people still like, nah, this is all. This is all fake. All right, let's see if she backs up. She didn't back up. We're good. You're good. Got good crits. Oh no, she's awful. She's hiding behind it. Damn. Yeah, you might have to energy shot if she stays there. Yep, I'm oh, gonna. Okay. Oh, no, still. <laughs> she's just hanging out. So, the spider brain can hang out behind those air conditioners, and you just can't get close enough to get good shots on her. You probably, you, ha you, you, may, you may have seen the grid that pops up right before I shoot. That is my range. Oh yeah, we've never talked about that either. We have not. Um, <laughs> yeah, the green grid is uh, what you can hit and what you can. Here, I'll hold it for half a second here. There. Yep. So if an enemy is within that range, I will hit them. If they're not, I have a chance to either miss them or hit them for pretty minimal amounts of damage. Yeah, usually like 10 or 11. I mean, they had to do something to make rifles seem like they were sort of worth it, Box McCloud. Because rifles all have, like, giant ranges on them. And uh, remember what I said about goo coming out of people's eyeballs? I hope you like more of it. Oh, wait, no, that, it only comes out of his mouth, not his eyes. It seem, it's really weird, because Eve has the ability to set people on fire and the ability to turn people into goo. She doesn't seem to use either or with rhyme or reason. Just... Oh, uh, and in your casual playthrough, there is no indication that you should do this. And if you stay on the roof long enough, the, the plane crashes into it and you die. <laughs> this game does a lot of things like that where it just... Oh, you didn't know to do that? <laughs> Sucks to be you. It's it, it is kind of unforgiving for new runners, isn't it? Or it is. Or casual players. Yeah. Like your first casual play definitely has some some pretty unforgiving spots in it. All right, bad AT. Ah, got slowed. I bumped you into that too. Oh, and my ammo was off. Yeah, there's that one. There, there are a couple of spots in game that if you don't know what you're doing, you are on a timer whether you think you are or not. <laughs> Casually, the ending is the worst. It really is. Yeah. So many people die. Now they're going to talk about why Eve went to that particular hospital... Because it turns out Dr. Clamp used to work at that hospital trying to make sperm that didn't have mitochondrial DNA. 
Uh, what room did he work in? Uh, I believe he worked in the load zone. Oh, <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to start calling it that instead of like come room was good, no doubt, but the load zone, the load the load zone load is drive. just that's just genius. <laughs> So we're, this is the end of day four. It's just, you know, a little more button mashing before I get there. At the beginning of day five, depending on which uh, SMG you got in the hospital, I got the M10. You can also get the micro Uzi. You'll visit, depending on which one you got, you might visit the warehouse uh, just to pick up one gun and one tool. Um, we're going to go there anyway because normally they only visit with the micro Uzi, but I'm going to pick up a, a better armor there <laughs> for marathon safety. So and we're going to visit the warehouse damage. anyway. What's that? And then you're going to take plus two damage off that PV. And I'm going to go ahead and take the damage off the gun, because might as well. Yeah, the reason that uh, that one chest with the Micro Uzi and M10 is so important is the Micro Uzi has slots that you can put in power-ups on the gun, uh, one of which is called Quick Draw, which gives you an 80% chance to be able to fire at the beginning of, of the, every fight. Just immediate, immediate full ATV. Uh, and of course, that's good for speed running. Um, <laughs> uh, the M10 doesn't have that, so we usually skip the warehouse just to save 40 seconds or so, and then try to make it up that way. But there's a safety vest in here, so that's what we're grabbing right now. Yep. And also with the micro Uzi, later on you get a gun, you get the ability to put frost bullets on it because it's got another slot, and the frost bullets, the second dungeon of this day, uh, frost bullets are good against almost everything there. Well, but you can't get frost bullets in the load zone, right? You cannot, uh, because we turned we turned off the liquid nitrogen, so there are no more well, frost bullets. you don't bullets. get what you need to put in the slot in the load zone. That is correct. Okay, just wanted to make sure. Uh, oh yeah, tool, M10, PPK, stats. I'm a bad person. <laughs> no, no. The load zone is true genius. Right. And that's all we're going to do now. Normally in a casual playthrough, you can go all the way through the warehouse, uh, fight a giant crab, and get uh, get, a, get a rocket launcher. Uh. Are you going to grab the uh, Chinatown tool and tool over the uh, defense? Yeah. Okay. And so there's a, uh, in this kind of corridor here, after the second fight, there is a secret room where you can grab a tool, but the problem is why we don't usually grab it is because there's a 50-50 shot of getting a refight if you do it. Yeah. But for marathon safety, we're gonna yeah. do it. No crits. You're still, you're still gonna be way below it, I believe. Oh yeah, because like my estimate is like a 255. I'd have to have literally the worst museum in the history of museums to even sniff that been a pretty good run except for missing the uh, frog skip yep. and what else uh, micro Z versus m10 but micro Z, m10, yeah. that's less important than it used to be then the beginning of the first two revives probably cost you about 20 seconds as well otherwise it's been a pretty good run yeah no it's been solid yeah. no don't poison me so these snakes if they bite you will poison you Going out of range. Are those supposed to be cats and not just a different kind of rat? Yeah, they're cats. Those are cats. You know what's never out of range? <laughs> the Detroit Love Hunter arms. And they're a nonprofit movement dedicated to sending hope and finding help with depression, addiction, self injury, and suicide across the entire country. They exist to encourage, inform, inspire, and also to invest directly into treatment and recovery, and they are the charity we are raising money for this year. Exclamation point donate if you want the link. I always try to. I always think this room is in that lower spot that looks like a doorway and not just right there by the uh, phone. No yeah. refight, so that's nice. Yeah, okay. It didn't cost you much time at all. Uh, so BP and make sure you're multiple with three under gun. Oh, you are. Good. I am. Uh, 
you put in damage again, that's fine. Now, by the way, I've, I have done, it's called Sledgehammer, if you only put it in damage instead of ATV. Just no uh, AC at all? Yeah. Oh, you put a couple in ATV, but um, it's not as bad as you think. I mean, I think Flintstone, uh, another runner of this game, got a PB doing just uh, Sledgehammer. Uh, yeah, WJG, it would be basically, the poison's uh, effect is the same no matter who gives it to you. I think it's percentage of your health based. Uh, but yeah, the the snakes can poison you the same way the red orbs did or the snakes that were at Central Park. All right, now it's time for the worst level in any place, in any game, the sewers. So these bats can uh, blind you with their supersonic yells or whatever you want to call it, crap. Um, and if you do, if that happens, and you do not have a cure for oh, it, and you're not sure. <laughs> uh, you can either energy shot them, which always hits, or you can get them in a corner and you can get right next to them and shoot. But mostly, I it's just gonna miss every shot if she um, if she's completely blinded. Yeah, when you're blinded, you it, it doesn't make you miss. It just drops your weapon range to one. Yep. <laughs> Fucking sand so, attack. Sand attack. Pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. Supersonic Zubat. <laughs> she hurt herself in her confusion. A lot of people struggle with hurting themselves, but two red loves on her arms is there to help. <laughs> Ooh, that was good target selection. Well, I have... Yeah, ESPN needs to hire me. <laughs> All right, Actually, I, have... I don't want to work for ESPN. They're kind of going downhill. All right, and yeah. this in this room coming up can be what I consider the worst fight in the game, and I got oh, it. Oh, you got it. That one stinks. Uh, you have five cure demons, by the way, stop picking them up. <laughs> yeah. Oh, oh! Don't, don't walk into that either. Oh, oh, look, you can use one of your cure demons that you have. <laughs> Normally, uh, there's more of a delay between when the first bat sonars and the second bat sonars. Yeah, the way I always play it is when one of them sonars, I kill the other one like, with energy shit and you're flying again. <laughs> it's okay. <laughs> I, don't, yeah, I got cure D for days. <laughs> I knew that was coming from the box. I knew somebody was going to. Uh, yeah, yeah, that was an easy one. Yeah. All right, now we're down to if this is what I consider the worst fight in the game, what with two bats and two snakes, you you generally end up poisoned and uh, and blinded, and it's just it's not a fun time. But it, yeah, and, having... and it's an optional fight. Yeah, he's having really bad sewer luck right now. Uh, it's not as bad as it could have been. He could have gotten a fight there, but it is pretty bad to get that third fight. Every rat has this one. <laughs> You're talking about poison. That's where we were going. Uh, I got you. Yeah, and yes, yeah. cure these nuts. <laughs> you know, you know where the best place to cure these nuts is? The load zone. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> All right. How does this compare to every other charity you've Uh, yeah, it, 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 it does not. It just does not. Oh, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah, I'm getting blinded. There's no... I could have energy shot out of that, but I kind of want a little more PE for some stuff coming up. I heard you can find Ligma in the load zone. What is Ligma? I don't know what that is. <laughs> Could you explain Ligma to me? Uh, <laughs> I believe it's a derivative uh, uh, of uh, Segunda. I don't know the one. I don't know that one. Segundi's nuts. Oh god, we have gone off the rails and we've still got a good hour left in this run. It's uh, delightful. <laughs> it is absolutely delightful. As long as you guys aren't getting fed up with my commentary, I oh, think it's going great. You're all good. And you know what else is all good? To write love to write on our arms. <laughs> also, profit movement dedicated for sending hope and finding help for people struggling with depression, addiction, self-injury, and suicide. They exist to encourage, inform, inspire, and also to invest directly into treatment and recovery. And I can pretty much say that word for word because I have said that exactly word for word two years prior to this. Of the last two years. <laughs> when you run a three-day event, 
you start to remember the thing you're saying every 30 minutes. <laughs> no doubt. Yeah. So that well, was I'll the goof. I'll never goof forget or... my first time in the load zone. Oh. <laughs> yeah, welcome to the load zone. We brought you here. So we just ran into the goo from Central Park. But now we're going to pump the goo somewhere else. Pump the goo into the load zone. If it looks like that, you may want to consult a physician. <laughs> yeah. You may just want to immediately <laughs> visit the hospital. Yeah. But maybe not that particular hospital. Yeah, either. maybe not that but one. But not that one. Maybe go to a different one. You're in New York City. There's got to be plenty of options for hospitals. No, there's only that one person driving around in the streets. No, that's or, right. is that the, or is that the only doctor left? Yeah, he's making a house call. <laughs> All right, all right, he's about to fight one of the uh, hardest bosses in the game. This is Centipede coming up. Uh, there's, We're just kind of going to watch and commentate. To, uh, you don't grab the med three, do you? Nope. Oh, that's risky. <laughs> I got three revives. Nothing's risky that's right now. <laughs> yeah, I'm going to not say anything during the Centipede fight. <laughs> right, oh, does, does, mole, oh, the mole woke up and chose violence. This mole hates you. It really does. Oh, good. One turn fight. Nice one good. turn. We're gonna burn a mid two. That's close enough to full. Got a mid three there. Alright, now Centipede, I'm not gonna say anything during this fight. Alright, I'll talk. <laughs> so, Centipede phase one, he's gonna try and uh, either poison you or blind you. Sometimes he'll rush you. Oh, I see. You can use haste here. Uh, that'll help you in splits. You might be able to get, you know, pop a couple shots. Nice touch. Uh, you can uh, pop a couple shots off while he's splitting, and then you can kill one of his ligaments. He turns into four uh, enemies. Uh, there's the blind attack. He's able to skip it, and if you can hit one in between here. Uh, Did we get it? it? Didn't get the oh. kill. And now he's got an energy shot. Get rid of one of them. Remember, we're on random bullets, so she you know, even can decide where I have Rhea shoots. And she's just going to shoot wherever she decides. So you want to get as close as you can to like two of them, or when they're moving, and just get lucky, basically. That's really what it is. Or in a case like this, just get close to one and hope and oh, get that lucky. lucky. That was beautiful. <laughs> this is going to be All a right, good, uh, a good centipede that, fight. It has the dialogue. Yes, yeah. that was a really good fight, dude. That was. God. That seemed, yeah, you made that seem effortless. Dare I say it looked even easier than your trip to the load zone? It didn't look hard at all. Honestly, that fight was easier than the fight I had in the load zone. <laughs> hey, if you have any men, too, just <laughs> Yeah, it got much harder when you were in the load zone. I think I've got one more med too, but I'll I'll, I'll deal with that in a minute. It's really yeah. stiff competition. All right. <laughs> Not that I don't enjoy the puns. It's all right. You know, usually yeah. disc changes in games happen at you know kind of major points, right? Oh wait, there's a disc change in this run. Watch right here. We're walking back into the room we were just in. It's the weirdest disc change spot I have met in any game. Yeah, it's strange. You walk out, you grab the gate key, and then when you walk back to the same place you just were, disk change. Make sure you stick it in quickly. Well, I'll yeah, stick... movie. Set centipede fight went really good. Yeah, yeah that, no, that was, was great. That was impressive. That was a really but, nice fight. Uh, the way I was... you guys described it, I was expecting something awful, and you're like, nope, no problem. Bro. It's one of those fights, it can go really well, but if one thing goes wrong... It could just kill you. I lucked out and just nothing really went wrong. I almost always get you poisoned. Like, you said you like puns, right? I love puns. Did you know that tomorrow at uh, 8.05 a.m. there's a Super Metroid run where every single door transition, like every single room that the person goes into, um, they're going to make a different dad joke? 
that's amazing, and I will have to make sure to watch that. <laughs> and for those of you watching, um, the runner is actually going to match up to a total of four hundred dollars donated during his run. Nice. All right, so now we're so, back at the museum. If you had to live in this world and visit one of these two places, the museum or the hospital, which one would you pick? Uh, the museum, and you'll find out why. Okay. And yeah, I could agree with that, Moogie. Centipede either goes really well or really bad. There's no in the middle. Because, I mean, he can, he can poison you, he can blind you. Does he have a paralyzed attack? I can't remember. No, but you did you did a really good job uh, evading the poison on that first turn. Uh, I'm usually really bad at evading that po evading the poison on that first turn. I you, I usually don't care at that point. <laughs> I mean, you've got <laughs> enough health that it's not a big deal if you. Um, all right, Scorpion also woke up and chose violence. You don't want to be in front of the scorpion when you shoot it, uh, because it immediately counterattacks with the tail. And that tail hurts. Your dodge is pretty well though. That was pretty good. Yeah. Your damage is where you want it to be, 37. That's where you want to hit the scorpion for. Alright. Oh, oh wait, and I can go ahead and toss. You know what? I'm keeping a cure D, just in case a pterodactyl decides to be a dick. Yeah, I always, I always carry just one into the museum. So there's pterodactyls in here, because why not? Uh, and the pterodactyls can blind you. It's one of the last enemies that can blind you, and when it does, uh, you lose a lot of time because you can't shoot straight. There are also raptors. We like raptors. Then there's the little green things, the iguanas. They're basically the new uh, the new birds. We hate them. They drop junk. Yeah, they stink. Uh, you like but... raptors, how do you feel about the last pastor? I don't want that what? Uh, I have never seen Velocipaster. That's a real movie. I, it, no, I know. Uh, it, it's 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 really bad, but it's it's really funny and how bad it is. My wife loves terrible movies, so I'm aware of Velocipaster, <laughs> but I have <laughs> never actually seen it. <laughs> Probably a good call. Oh sweet! I got this fight instead of the uh, iguanas. Yeah, so a lot of fights in uh, the museum can either be uh, a really obnoxious fight with the enemy or a good one that we can kill easy. This is a good one. Uh, there's going to be another fight coming up quick where we either fight one enemy or four. Obviously, we don't want four because it's super slow. So we'll, we'll see how your marathon luck goes, but uh, that, was, that was really lucky. Yes, that's the weird thing. The fact that there are dinosaurs. Not all the other weird shit. That Aya has seen in the past five days. No, no, but it's the dinosaur. Not the giant centipede. Not the alligator. Not the giant worms coming out of the ground. Dinosaurs. <laughs> uh, Katsumo was talking about uh, a lot of casual runners, or runners or uh, people who play this game, just don't know how to use the weapon system and kind of flounder when they get this late in the game because they haven't leveled up their weapons pretty much. Uh, I've seen that a lot. Uh, how about you? Uh, what was your first uh, time playing it like? Oh, my first time playing it, I got... I, I thought more bullets was good, so I found, like, the time 7 that I think comes oh. on, and I put that on a weapon, and I thought random shot was the best thing ever because I didn't have to bother picking targets, and more bullets was more good. Um, you need to run out of ammo. I did. <laughs> All okay, force. A lot, of, a lot of people don't get uh, too into the uh, tooling system and the weapon system, so uh, they kind of struggle uh, when they get to day five here. All right, no refight, no re, no refight. Nice. That refight can suck because it can be. Uh... Or it's yeah, usually it's all iguanas. Yeah. All right, so that's. 0 for 1 here in the museum thus far. If I get, like, perfect museum luck here, but I've been getting all these safeties and wasting time and could have gotten a PB out of this, I'll be mad at myself. <laughs> you can always run again. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, we call them something else. <laughs> yes, yes we do, but I'm going to call them iguanas. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um... 
what's that? What are we on? Are we PG-13 or are we R? What are we talking well, about? Well, I think Meta, Meta mentioned he'd already dropped multiple F-bombs today, so... Yeah, if okay. that puts us into R, as long as we stay out of X, I think we're fine. Okay, so they're, the iguanas are called little green shit fucks. Yep. That's yeah, what we that's, call them. That's fine. All right. <laughs> that, that, next year, I can't say for sure. I, I am I'm ceding control to Matt next year. Sure. I got I got real life, I kind of did, etc. But for this year, we, we keep true to the origin. <laughs> it's fine if you if you have a kid next year, you'll have your own little green shit fuck. There you go. Nice. That's that's right here. If he's green, that's the place where he's going to love me either way. There you go. See that, and that's key. And you know, I've read, I've read enough Monster Girl harem movies to not be surprised, uh, uh, books to not be surprised by green children. And you know who will help you find love either way? To write to love, love on, on our arms. arms. Always there to support you in the good times and the bad. <laughs> They're a non-profit movement dedicated to spreading hope and finding help for people struggling with depression, addiction, self-injury, and suicide. And they encourage, inform, inspire, and invest directly into treatment and recovery. Also, I only noticed this on Wednesday. I have been playing this game since 1998. Like, I got this on release day, 1998. Wow. Yeah, I've been playing this game a long time, but casual for most of that. That's the mitochondria in the background. It's the powerhouse of the cell. Yeah, but like that is a like a model of a mitochon of mitochondria in the background. The powerhouse. You know what I just noticed the other day? Is that uh, she, her brass actually falls out of her gun when she shoots? I didn't. Oh yeah. Before. The shells. Yeah, I'm gonna burn a med three because I'm. Oh, you got uh, two bonus points. Box, I don't recommend eating that blurst watermelon. Yeah, do not eat that watermelon. It's it's not. Oh, holding the wrong direction. All right, this is the room he was talking about. They can either have one enemy or four. We obviously want the one. And we get the marathon. Four. Marathon <laughs> look. And it's not only is it four enemies, it's three iguanas, which are just the fucking worst. Little green shit fucks. Little green shit fucks. Yeah, the other fight is a single pterodactyl, and it is a much easier, much faster fight. Yeah, that one takes uh, two turns. This one took about five or six. Oh, oh, if we jumped away, that would have been a kill. What a <laughs> dick. <laughs> yeah, oh, and I, and I picked up everything, which means I'm sure I've got some trash I need to get rid of. Yeah. A med to yeah. some junk. And you use your VP here, too. For the longest time, I actually thought this was like a room that didn't have multiple things, multiple different fights. But then I finally did get the raptor fight in this room. Oh yeah. Um, like it's got to be stupid rare, but it does exist. I think it's like twenty percent. Usually, uh, fight luck is eighty twenty. Almost everything is eighty twenty in this game. <laughs> Other than a few random things that are fifty fifty. Yeah. Oh, and then there's like the ninety nine one for that tool, super tool in the ramble. That's right, and uh, it's it's ninety five five for the one in the um, train car after the centipede. So it's not always you know eighty twenty, but so I is about to do something stupid. She's gonna jump out of one broken window, jump down to the floor below, her, and jump into a different broken window. Which is really dumb. Quite athletic. It is, but if she slips there, she falls all the way to the ground, probably dies, and well, yeah, we I mean, all we all die too because eventually Eve takes over. And... Yeah, I mean it's terrifying. Oh, I don't know how I didn't just get blinded there. You just gotta remember yeah. the tenet of every D and D adventure: always bring rope. Always bring rope. I really so have no idea how I didn't get blinded there. It must have been by like one pixel, dude. <laughs> but those, so those pink sneezes from uh, the pterodactyls, those will blind you if you get hit by it. And of course, we don't want that. It'll lose time in a run. Uh, 
time, and so it's really it's really aggravating because we're this far on the run, and to get hit by that loses you about 20 seconds. So there's a lot of curse words uh, said when the pterodactyl chooses to speak. Do, do you mean curse words, or do you mean highly technical speedrunning terminology? <laughs> a little bit of both. <laughs> Cure P. Not useful. <laughs> That's fine. My next big menu, I'll uh, deal with it. Alright, three of these. This can, this one can either be two of the little green shit fucks or three of the little green shit fucks. Neither is great. Oh, oh, good. Oh, and they can jump on your hitbox, and if they do, you can get stuck in their hitbox. It's great. don't want little green shit fucked inside of you. You really don't. <laughs> no. Uh, by the way, you you know, uh, Reaver, you can hit up instead of down twice when the on the, the final menu, right? After fights. Oh, you got a really bad fight here. No. Uh, no, I didn't know that. I've always... Yeah, just... Yeah, X, X, up, X after this fight. You know, it'll be much easier. Alright, for it being this terrible fight thus far, it has not gone terribly. Yeah, I mean, down to one is actually a pretty good fight. Uh, even though you got really bad luck there. XX up it. Oh, you, I, you wanted, do it on that I wanted those. <laughs> well, at least you figured it out, though. Yeah, I wanted that ammo. That was 45 bullets. That's. <laughs> you might be in trouble now. I hope not. I may have to grab the ammo on day six. In this fight, of course, I get the the worst of the. Oh, and I energy shot at the wrong guy. No, it's fine. He it won't. It's fine. Will he die from it? Oh, okay. Then, then yeah, yeah, never mind. Because those true non dinosaur guys, uh, they will die with like a half bar of PD. So using a full on the uh, the turn is where you want to do. Although, it's... go ahead. Does it kind of look like the, um, the Watchers from Horizon Zero Dawn? Yeah, uh, yeah. Yeah, the Raptors yeah. do kind of have that look to them. Uh, you have two BP, by the way. Um, the Horizon Zero Dawn was a great game. That game I was like amazing. Only very shortly into it, the, um, spoiler alert, the village just got, like, destroyed oh. or attacked. Like after her ceremony. That game, as yeah. As far as I've gotten so far. That game is so good. Yeah, I'm still I, playing through it, but it's so it's great so far. I actually own it for like two years before actually playing it. <laughs> I own it on PS4 and PC, and I think I might own it on Xbox, but I have problems. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah. own Dragon Ball Fighter Z on Switch, PlayStation, PC, Xbox. And PS4. That is far too many systems to own a single game on. Yeah. No problem. Alright, so what I just did there was I went to a secret elevator and got a tool and a shotgun. Which is a secret thing we're going to use later. <laughs> secret time. No, um, remember we talked about earlier with tools, you can move either bonus stats or, uh, you know, abilities off of between guns. Well, we're going to take the shotgun burst off of that shotgun and put it on a pistol. Oh, coolest cutscene of 1998 right here. No, bar none, coolest cutscene of 1998. By the way, uh, what's your timer look like? Like, how far behind are you? Like, uh, five, six? About uh, almost seven minutes. And it's not too bad. Marathon. Yeah, it'll be fine. You've a lot of bad luck today. Yeah, Mar I've had a lot of marathon luck. Yeah. Now, is that in comparison to your estimate or your PB? My PB. Because your PB is like way faster than that, I think, than your estimate. Yeah, yeah, no, no. My PB gives my estimate another like 14 minutes or something. Yeah, so you got another 7 minutes to spare. Fine. Yeah. <laughs> oh no. We'll come in under estimate. We'll be fine. Alright. But is this not the coolest cutscene of 1998? Uh, it, 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 it is. It's only rival. It's, like, it's very dramatic. It looks like the dinosaur, like with that, he's like, I can't even. 
But he had his little like hand and like folded over like up near his head, which he like tilted off to the side with his arch, his back arch. Hundred percent. That's like I can't even in a soap opera. All right, here's a room that has a refight, and we get it instantly. Uh, marathon luck. Marathon luck. This is one for two. Luffy says the parachute testing is a competitor. Sorry. Yeah, see, I, I wouldn't oh, say that one. one. It is a different cutscene that I would put as the competitor. Oh shit, I'm full. Uh, well, you know what, I'll do it right before clamp room. Because who knows what'll happen in this room. No fight! It is pretty fire, Katsuma. Alright, this time I'm going to go the correct direction towards Clamp's office. <laughs> but first, I'm going to... Wait, look at the bottom of your inventory, see what you have. Yeah, cure peeking go. Alright, so we're back in Clamp's office. made us here for some reason that's not really ever fully explained like even when you read the text why he decided to come up into clamp's office in the middle of a museum full of dinosaur monsters is really never explained very well other than what's your ridiculous theory to support this i don't have one it just, you gotta make it up on the spot there's... <laughs> he's a sleeper agent he's a sleeper agent for eve done Actually, no. More. He's a he's a sleeper agent for the space pirates trying to keep Aya slash Samus down. You know what? That's solid. He came back in time to stop to kill her, um, so that she didn't have Samus as a, as a gener like down generations down the road. Yeah. Oh, and remember that one time where Daniel sucker punched that guy like during day one. Mm -hmm. Sucker punch. <laughs> Boom! If, if I had a nickel for every time Daniel sucker punched somebody in this game, I'd have two nickels, but it's weird that I'd have two. <laughs> yeah. Uh, this game is it is a great casual stream. It's it is a lot of fun to speed run. Um, you just. You have to deal with the fact that the, it has a lot of, here's a bunch of action, now here's 10 minutes of cutscene. Now here's some action, now here's 8 minutes of cutscene. <laughs> uh, but I really do love the game. Also, uh, Clamp has decided to uh, sacrifice his life for mitochondria. Uh, they want to run an RPG, but they don't want to run like an eight-hour RPG. You know what I mean? Yes. Yeah. Like it's it's a very good introductory uh, speed run for RPG runners. And then Clamp realizes, wow, being set on fire really hurts. <laughs> He's on fire. He's on fire. Oh, I didn't split it. Coolest cutscene of 1998. <laughs> Cutscenes can be good sometimes. I may or may not have convinced somebody to run Celeste all dialogue percent, which didn't exist prior to probably this run today or tomorrow, whenever it is. <laughs> yeah, I may be, might be commentating on that. I, I think it's a more of I don't, oh, I don't know shit. yet. I just, I just. I, I don't know how to put it without giving away people who haven't seen it, that's kind of the point of the run. But if you are literally dealing with almost anything that, like, great love on your arm, about supporting and mental health and, you know, depression and all that stuff, Celeste, if you read it and you do all the talking, it will really speak to you. It was, it was quite an experience. I can, I can agree with that. Alright, we got a boss fight here coming up. Yep, and we did luck out, and we did skip a uh, another refight. Oh yeah, I saw that. Yeah. Huh? 
That Triceratops sure doesn't look anything like the rest of the background, I wonder. So this is the Triceratops fight. It's a thing. Yeah, when we were talking about Crit Over before, he's one of the most uh, notorious offenders of doing so. Uh, if your health is below like 150 and he decides to charge you, you're done. So we want to get his head off as, as quickly as possible. Yeah, once we get his head off, we'll do a lot more damage to him. Plus, he won't charge around. But... Oh, he charging. Oh, yeah, you do have the best, don't you? Yeah, I have the better vest, so it's not as... Alright, now the and now his head's off. You're probably going to proc on this fight, but it looks more safe. I don't think you're going to die. How many? Do you still got three revives? I still have three revives. Okay, After yes. T-Rex, I may uh, drop one of those. Remember to grab the ammo uh, right before T-Rex. Yeah. And use your BP here, because you dumped 45 on that one when I was trying to teach you <laughs> how to do menus. Uh, yep. Um, what is your ammo don't need to heal. Oh, 130. You should be okay. Yeah, you I'm still good. have a medicine too on you, by the way. Do I? Yeah, I'm just gonna very loudly knock on wood here when you say you should be fine. <laughs> You'll be fine. I have never burned through more than one revive after Centipede. Oh, we're talking about ammo. <laughs> yeah, what about that ammo, though? Check on ammo. Oh, yeah. Well, I'm gonna grab the 30 here and then. Grab it from the, uh, the Navy, Navy guy or whatever. It yeah. should be fine. Because you're going to use 30 here, probably. Yeah, they're about. <laughs> Moogie, normally I do use uh, haste for... After I energy shot, as soon as I get enough, I do haste. But uh, I, quite frankly, just forgot. <laughs> Alright, here's the T-Rex. Not as bad as you think he is, really. By you, I'm just saying. Yeah, no, if he jumps into that corner, you're kind of. Oh, perspective's a little off of that you're gonna hit by that. Me too. So, yeah, uh, really, for the most part, T Rex is about avoiding the flame. That, that's really kind of the only thing he's got that's dangerous. That tail worries me a little bit. Just... He can't slap you with it. No, but I've seen that in a lot of animated shows, and it never ends well for the protagonist. That's fair. Just go to the other one. Yeah, I got enough meds and whatnot that even if he burns me. Alright, and then we just picked up a gun off of the T-Rex. That's a very important gun. Crazy, you want to explain that gun while I do the uh, menus? Sure, I can do that. Uh, so it's an M8000, which means we have two turns. So yeah, every time we do a turn, uh, well, I guess we can do it twice. I don't know how to really explain that. <laughs> every uh, round, we, can... we get two turns. Yeah. Um, and this one has the shotgun attachment on it, which we're going to use for E4. Uh, because E4 without a shotgun attachment is really hard to do. The shotgun is obviously hits like a shotgun, means it, it has spread. You can kill multiple enemies at once. Yeah. And this one it has more base damage. Um, and the two turns do 100% damage instead of rate of fire, too. No refight, and my XP is good, so I would like to not. No yeah, you, can shoot, you can shoot and use a medicine on the same turn, as as Boogie said, or other uh, other types of actions. Yeah. Uh, oh, check your uh, what's your XP roll. It's good. It's good. I'm okay. at, I only need like 600. All right. 
Oh yeah, you got all those refights, I forgot. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, no, XP's great. <laughs> well, cutscene. So, I'm sure you've all been wondering, whatever happened to all that goo? I'm just setting them up. Building suspense. <laughs> so during this, I'd like to take a moment to let everybody know, just like, you know, that T-Rex rose from the dead. Bright Love and Arms can help you rise from your depression and help so many other people do so. The nonprofit movement dedicated to sending help and finding help people struggling with depression, addiction, health injury, and suicide. They could be encouraged and more inspired and invest directly into treatment and recovery. BP. Oh, I'll have to BP before. Oh, no, wait, I can do it here. And you have a lot of damage. Damage at 100. Yeah. Alright, so there was, like, you could try to visit this door earlier in the in the museum, but it's covered in, like, a hard layer of goo. But uh, after we beat the T-Rex, the goo goes away for reasons? I don't know. <laughs> we took the T-Rex to the, to the load zone and got rid of the goo. Sure, let's go with that. Boo. <laughs> <laughs> And there's Eve, who gives you the shush. Yeah, we're about to have, like, really long uh, cutscene. Like, I mean, this is, what, probably almost ten minutes of cutscenes? Yeah, it's eleven from the door. Once you get in the door, it's about eleven. Eleven minutes. from the door. No fizzy paint soda with the rain. Very nice. So about that goo. That goo's angry, like it could have came out slower. No, goo is angry. And now the goo has bones. Again, I'm pretty sure I saw something like this on the internet. Well, I mean, you're watching it on the internet right now? That, you know what, fair point. She aims her gun, but doesn't shoot for reasons? I, I don't know. Clearly, I guess Daniel and Mado did okay jumping out that window in Clamp's office from the second floor. Yeah. Nobody broke an arm or a leg. Tuck and roll, baby. Tuck and roll. <laughs> baby, they jumped into the goo. Oh, and here they do a huge exposition dump here. Uh, it turns out your sister... Who is one of the ghostly little girl you've been following around died at a fairly young age for the, with your mom in a car accident. And you got a cornea from her, a donated cornea, and Melissa, who became the actress who became Eve, got a kidney. And Maya was the one who had the evil mitochondria. Or no, Clamp is the one who did the transplant. And he added some of the evil mitochondria during the transplant or something. I don't know. The story of this game is really confusing. <laughs> <laughs> the more people that are unhappy that you've made a pun, the better the pun normally is. <laughs> it's true. 
Okay, so it was Maya's mitochondria. Clamp was just the doctor. Gotcha. So your sister had mutated mitochondria but died in a car accident. And you got a cornea from her and Melissa, who became Eve, got a kidney. And that's why your mitochondria could fight her mitochondria. Yeah, uh, what's her name? Your sister's the one that uh, is the child that we chase everywhere. Yeah. She's the ghostly little girl that we chase down hallways. <laughs> also, did the military not see what happened when they sent the jets against Eve? Like, they thought the helicopters were going to be a better idea? Spoiler alert, not a better idea. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we've seen all the Godzilla movies. That's true. <laughs> It's about the same. What? You mean more jets? More tanks that we just lost, like, six small countries with the GDP on. And now the mitochondria can apparently shoot lasers or plasma. It absorbed ill tempered sea bass. There you go. Kick his ass, sea bass. <laughs> oh, that is a deep hole. <laughs> that is a deep cut. <laughs> Alright, and uh, because I have a wireless controller, I'm going to run to the restroom and button mash. Yep. That's the best thing about... Uh, the P So we're running this on PSTV, right? So a PSTV is like this little-known console that runs the Vita OS. Yep. It's, small it's smaller than the size of your hand. It uses either a DS4 or a DS3 controller, and it's HDMI out. It just, it's basically a Vita on the TV. It's called Vita TV in like uh, Europe and Japan. In the US, it's called PS TV for whatever reason. Hopefully, you guys got yours many years ago. No, I had to look spend at a lot the of money. current retail on them. Yeah, the current retail is insane. So, uh, about 2017. Yeah, on Black Friday they were going for like forty dollars. <laughs> uh huh. And now they're going for two hundred. So it's expensive to get now, but it's it's such an awesome little console. I still I, own I a Vita. I bought and mine I, late last year. I paid uh, just under two hundred for it. Yeah, I got mine with uh, one eighty eight, but it was new in box. Nice. Mine was new in box. Yeah. Because my first one broke, so I'm just like, no, I'm getting a new one this time. <laughs> the cheapest pre-owned. Oh. In used condition. One note, uh, motion Shut sickness up. alert. If you get motion sick, you should probably look away for about a minute and a half. The, the cheapest on eBay at present listing is $189.85 for a used good condition. That's about what I paid for my new inbox, but that was about a, that was about a year ago. The cheapest new one is two hundred and eight dollars and thirty-five cents. I mean, at that point, you know, you're only saving twenty bucks. I would buy the new one instead of the used one. Yeah. Yeah, that seems reasonable. I was lucky with the new inbox one because it came with a controller. Solid. So I, I could basically have a brand new DS3. So, I had to use my DS3 from my PS3. <laughs> I'm a really big fan of the DS3. I hated it at first, just because uh, the D-pad is really, really soft. Yeah. You yeah. Can hold it, down here. it can freeze if you hold it down too hard. But other than that, it's lightweight, runs for like 25 hours before <laughs> playing it. It's so good. Oh, got some goo on your tail rotor. Yeah, I've heard that. The modding uh, capabilities of the PSTV are good. I'm, I haven't done mine yet, um, because I don't want to do it until I'm done with parents. Headshot. <laughs> uh, I modded my, I, I modded mine, but I'm still running P, uh, like. I, you know, I, I bought, before I modded it, I bought a few games off of PS, you know, the PSTV store and then modded it. Like Parasite yeah. Eve, I bought from the, the, the PlayStation store before modding it. Modding it. Uh, it's nice. It can do a lot of stuff modded. 
I actually <laughs> own Parasite Eve on my Vita and I've never played it. Well, I own Parasite Whoa. Eve like three or four different ways. I... It, well, there's a recurring theme with games that I've purchased. I buy them because they're on sale and I intend to play them at some point, and then I never do. My Steam library is quite shameful, honestly. I feel that on a, on a deep emotional level. Uh, perhaps there's an organization that could help me with those deep emotions. And then, do we have a moment for a quick read? Yeah, go for it. We have from Michael Perkovich, Wolf... Is that Wolfman SD? Just Wolfman <laughs> SD, if it is, anyways. Um, he says, good luck to all the runners. Let's go dog pound. Um, that slightly broke that, but whatever. Um, and he donated $300. Nice. Whoa. Major shout outs for that. Crazy. And he hits and he donated to some target. Uh, three, Jesus. He put three hundred dollars towards the money fade. Oh, is, is it the top? Uh, uh, is it the money fade only five hundred total? Yeah, I am. Always you might be getting yourself a haircut. <laughs> I am always shocked at the amount of money people are willing to throw at making me look foolish, but I'm fine with that. If I raise five hundred dollars just to get a haircut, I feel like I've done a good job. Um. Storyline-wise, Eve, uh, or I had just ditched a helicopter into the ocean. That's all. Yep, just basic things. And then they sit here and have, an, uh, you know, the epic evil mo dialogue slash monologue, whatever, of, Oh, I'm evil, and no, uh, you're not evil, I'm evil, no, no, I'm evil, well, I'm good, and you're evil, and blah, 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 whatever. Mitochondria, bad, evil. Nucleus good, or the other way around, whatever. Yeah. <laughs> At this point in the game, most runners are like, I'm over this, stop talking. Stop talking, <laughs> I just want to shoot stuff. Yeah. And so the Eve 4 which is what we're about to fight, has three targets. That's why we use the shotgun, so we can hit all three at the same time. Otherwise, it gets real difficult. Yeah. And you don't want to get uh, grabbed by her either. But you can see when I shoot, three numbers come up. He's hitting all three targets. Oh, that reload's gonna oh. cost you. Oh! Yep. <laughs> that got me in my PB the other day, too. Nope. Back it up. That's not a grab, that's just a slap. Oh, the yellow one. Oh, no, I don't even remember what yellow does. Oh, you got peril, or not peril, you got so confusion uh, makes you not. Oh, nice! It makes all the buttons different for which you can run with. So like up is down, left is right, that sort of thing. Yeah. What was up, by the way? Was it right or left? Down. Oh, it was down. That's interesting. That's an easy one. Basically, I get. Does it just invert? I thought I always thought I was just oh, guessing. I thought it was random. Yeah, I thought it was random too. It, just, it only inverts it. Huh. And that's not, I mean, it, it, it's still not fun, but it's, yeah. and now you're about to meet the final parasite power. Oh, oh. she got me with the, but shortly we'll meet the final parasite power that Aya gets. Really, uh, she's going to fly. Oh, she's going to javelin me. That's like a 10 second time loss. Yep. And she procked you as well. Can you liberate you? There you go. Yeah, that, damage. that's what I was talking about. So this is the ultimate ab ability you get. It's called Liberate. You turn into a mitochondria angel and punch her seven times. <laughs> what was? I was in somebody's stream, and one of the commenters were like, "Did you just turn into rainbows right now?" 
<laughs> yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Mitochondria rainbows. Dude, just take a look. It's in a book. Reading a rainbow. Mitochondria rainbow. You know it's all downhill once your hair hands shatter. Absolutely. Split ends are a bitch. And now my, my hair hands suck. she becomes one with the goo. But wait, there's more. Remember <laughs> that sperm that she went and got from the load zone? What kind of time are you looking at? Like a 247? Probably 248. a 247, 248. Yeah. Which, considering the marathon strats and the luck, really not bad. Yeah, the mar marathon strats really screwed you <laughs> over today. <laughs> but, I mean, you're way underestimate. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's why I shot the estimate as high as I did. <laughs> like, yeah, I'm going to do some marathon strats. Plus, you know, I submitted like a month ago and I've had like two or three PBs since then. No, no, just, just, no, you gotta you got do is you gotta pretend this was all planned. You made it higher because you knew how badly I was gonna do on the first run, and you just wanted to make it easier for everyone. It was entirely intentional. This is the perfect run. Yeah, we planned it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It was, just, it was all planned. Uh, this is, we're, this is, this is the deep state of the, of the Dog Pound <laughs> yeah. Expo. We're the globalists. <laughs> Um, so make sure you grab the ammo just in case. And yeah, I'm gonna. Might as well grab Mick Ford's way there. And then, so this is Wayne, and here is where you can have him uh, etch the weapon and the armor if you want to keep one into New Game Plus. Since this is a speedrun, we're not going to do that. Grab the Med 4s. And we're going to grab the ammo. He'll give you two med fours, three med threes, I think, and 90 bullets in case you're you're low on anything. Which, if you're not speed running it, and you're, like if this is your first uh, casual playthrough, you are probably low on some stuff. Yeah, you're gonna want to grab everything from him. I don't know the cure M, P, and uh, D's. I've never... Oh yeah, those are useless. The cures. Can can the ultimate being actually even do those? Yeah, uh, I don't remember what one of them can hit you with confused. Uh, there's no poison. There's no poison. Uh, I don't think I... there's a blind. Oh, yeah, yeah. I don't know. I think it's only Moogie the, saying um, it can. The confused. I'll trust Moogie. <laughs> That's gotta be UV three though, right? Gotta be. Oh, we're about to fight five bosses in a row. Just yeah. So you guys know. Yeah. <laughs> All uh, fresh. So. Eve wanted that sperm in order to birth the ultimate being. Well, we killed Eve, and we thought, hey, cool, no problem, right? Yeah, it turns out the goo that was still there... Ultimate being. Which I like to think looks like a purple baby version of the character Morbo from Futurama. That's true. Also, would you say... Is that the true ultimate being was the goo we met along the way? We did meet a lot of goo. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> that's uh, accurate. There's a lot of very sticky things along the way. Also, if my Metroid theory, you know, pans out, the baby. <laughs> the baby. Well, the goo got pregnant uh, because of special semen in the load, in the load zone. zone. Yeah, he, yeah, we know. We got the the load zone. I love that title. I love that we have changed how you're going to refer to that. <laughs> I room. am going to refer to that room as the load zone. Oh, that was Box McCloud, wasn't it? That was Box <laughs> McCloud, Foxy yeah. Box himself. <laughs> Windmills do not work that way. Good night. 
I get pregnant if I only do it at night while the sperm is asleep? <laughs> Depends on whether you're in the load zone or not. All right, so now we're going to shoot a baby. Ooh, worst AT. I don't think that um, the ATV on this initial flight is random. I think it always starts at zero. I could be wrong, but it's always been zero for me. At some point, I, I wanna, I'm going to take a quick draw weapon here just to see. Yeah. You do. You have a lot of damage. You're doing 180 crits. Yeah. Well, you got to think. I got. I got. I only got one offense plus two, but I also stole the damage from the PPK. And I no, stopped. I stopped putting there. damage into AT at some point and just pumped it all into damage. All right, so that's a dead baby. Uh, baby, the, that baby could do an attack that always brings you to uh, one HP. It did not. Good crits. You need to go for it. Liberate? Mm. Do you not like the Liberate strat? I'm 50-50. Alright, so with Liberate here, it does 7 hits total. We want at least 4 hits on the body that's on the ground. A bit 2. There's right. 2. We need 2 more. 3. And I've gotten on, 1 in 6. Alright, she's going back for 4. Got, yeah, I got it. Got all four. If this works, it saves you time over just shooting uh, the UB3 down, or UB2 down. If it fails, you lose time. If you don't get enough yeah, hits on the body. It also costs you time on UB3 because you have to wait so long for the P to come back up. Right. And that's why. Uh, the YOLO is faster, but it is... It's dangerous. Yeah, though I do, I do still have three revives. I never threw one away. That's true. Right. So you have to die four times in a row <laughs> in order to completely die. I think we're going to be okay. Yeah, we're going to make it. Hey, you know what? I'm just going to face tank the rest of this. I got four revives, what, or three revives. What do I care? I never see that middle uh, attack, but I see it. I saw it here, and I saw it in the PB that I got on Wednesday. So I'm trying to get under those balls, but the, not his balls, but the energy balls, uh, so they don't hit you. So you have to run pretty far. Uh, nope. Wait, getting hit by balls. Too much ball talk right now. <laughs> yeah. Is there such a thing? Depends on if you're in the load zone or not. <laughs> Alright. So, he should die to this livery, no problem. This guy is well prepared for the load zone. Apparently my dogs have been released and are now licking my toes. Which is... <laughs> Alright, so there's ultimate being three done. Now it's time for ultimate being four. What will it become next? It was a baby, then like a weird flying adolescent thing, then a super buff dude. And now it's a jellyfish. Yeah, mitochondria bullets coming on the way. We do have mitochondria bullets coming. Spoiler. All right. Also, in the museum, I grabbed another machine gun. This is the only place I'm going to use it. So all shots do either one or two damage to this form of ultimate being. Um, and you just need to do 20 damage, I think. And then you realize, oh, I can't kill it. it. Nothing I do is doing any damage to it. And then made us like, well, I made some bullets out of her mitochondria, but you didn't. You told me not to give it to her. So Daniel, this is the other, the other candidate for coolest cutscene of 
He's on He's fire! On fire. <laughs> he got me at the same time. He's on fire. But, alright, so he jumps from a helicopter, catches fire, and has the wherewithal to throw a catchable pass of a clip or of a magazine of bullets to Aya. Into a belly flop. Into a belly flop. 6.5. And so now, with these special mitochondria bullets, I do a thousand damage a shot. And at this point, we're kind of in just the uh, the victory lap. Yeah. Though you can die if you're out of meds here. Those little lasers can kill you. And that's true. Those bullets truly show how the how mitochondria are the powerhouse oh, of the cell. Absolutely. My biology teacher was right. But what would a weird horror strategy action RPG be without an escape sequence? Also, chances, chances are, in your first casual playthrough, you're going to die here. If you take one wrong turn, you're dead. Or you try to save. Or if you try that's to a, save, you're dead. That's a, that's a, that's a way to... There's a save phone, game. there's a save phone right there. It's broken <laughs> if you try to use it. The ultimate being catches you and you die. That is... Oh yeah. Yeah, you make a wrong turn and you gotta do that whole boss rush again. That is such a dick move. Wow. Yeah. I'm so upset. It is I, a super dick move. Oh, it, it happened to me. Oh, then there's another thing that happens. Uh, which I'll show you in a second. That if you don't do during this escape sequence, you also die. Oh yeah, my first time playing through, I I didn't make it through here until three or four three or four tries before I finally figured it all out. It's so unforgiving. So right here, we're gonna set the boiler to explode. If you don't do this, he eventually catches you and you die. Does it at least tell you to do that? No. Oh well. So when you go into the room that had the save point that doesn't work, she uh -huh. says the boiler room. <laughs> that, that, not. That, that, that's the only. Where that is, is the only. Is that Gordon Ramsay now? <laughs> yeah. Could this be a 248, by the way? Or is this a 249? Uh, no, this will be a 248. Yeah, nice. It'll be a high 248, but it'll be there. It's a good marathon run. It's all I want to do. Yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> for a marathon run, I'm, I'm quite happy with it. Yeah. I'll be less. Yeah, great. I'll be less than ten minutes behind my PB for marathon with all the marathon safeties and stuff I took. Although, can we just be honest for a moment here and, and acknowledge that the best thing to come out of this run is the load zone? <laughs> I mean, that's without question. <laughs> there you go, buddy. Nice run. Thank you. Thank you. That uh, that, that was that was a good run. Um. So yeah, uh, there is a Parasite Eve Discord. Um, we honestly, we do a lot more of our, the current runners do a lot more of our uh, coordinating in Crazy Awesome's Discord. Uh, you should you should give him a follow, join the Discord if you're interested in uh, in Parasite Eve. It, it is a really fun game. The yeah, combat is super fun. And thank you to everybody who donated during the run. Glorious Cashew, WJG999, and Wolfman SD. Thank you for all the donations. Indeed. We are supporting to write love on our arms. We are coming up here shortly um, with our next game, which is Death Store, 80% current patch, with Foxy Jira. And we actually have the donation incentive met for that, which is... Ba -ba -ba using the umbrella so thank you guys for watching thanks both of you for running and for doing the commentary it was a super fun run um i had a freaking blast i'm gonna be honest here i i had uh, i had a blast you, and buddy. the load You're zone welcome. so <laughs> yeah we hope to see you next year again uh you know what and you look probably up will dark savior on the saturn i think you'll like it i'm gonna look that up but thanks it's for having weird, us but it's so good you're welcome have a great evening same to you Bye.